This is Mind Pump Right. Today's episode, we have Anomaly on the show, otherwise known as Dream Rare. This gentleman is a news analyst. He covers politics, current events, very controversial. Um, we enjoy a lot of his content, actually enjoy just the way he presents it, even though we may agree or disagree with him. He definitely doesn't follow the narrative. So if you're a little sensitive, you might not want to listen to this episode. The rest of you, you're going to love this. This guy pulls no punches. So we learn more about him in this episode, where he gets his views and where he's going. We think you're going to enjoy this. Today's program giveaway is Matt Sandabolic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale this month. MAPS Resistance, our beginner strength training program is half off. And then MAPS Prime Pro, you've all heard of it. This is for correctional exercise. Well, that's also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Anomaly, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having it's me. Appreciate having you guys. So I, uh, I found you a long time ago. I was on, I think it was YouTube. I don't remember where it was. And I see the, you know, it's got the thumbnail of you. And then the, uh, the title didn't match the thumbnail in the sense that you look, you kind of look like a California dude. You know, you, <laughs> I, I would have predicted that your views were different or whatever. Then I listened to you talk. You were super objective uh, with your your commentary. Very intelligent, I think, with the way you broke things down. And, and I just had such a different idea of what I thought you would say. You really grabbed my attention. And so from then on, here and there, I would, ca I would, I would watch your stuff. And I really liked um, just the authenticity and the objective, the, the way that you communicate uh, certain things. And um, that's really what grabbed my attention. And I want to know more about you because I don't know a ton about your history. How did you get to that point? I know you started in music and then you moved over to commentary. Let's go back a little bit. Like, where, where did this yeah. all start? Appreciate it. Um, I would say when I was in high school, interesting time because of, you know, I don't want to get into it now, but like Israel, Palestine stuff. And there's like a lot of war kind of brewing. And I remember during 9-11 after it happened, of course, I supported America. Uh, I thought what happened was terrible. But when I saw the war in Iraq and the Patriot Act, stuff like that, I remember everyone told me I was a conspiracy theorist. Like, if you don't want the government to spy on everyone, you must be them and all of that stuff. So I always kind of saw through certain stuff and I rapped about that. So I was always rapping about real stuff. And I had a couple million views on YouTube. I was doing well when YouTube first came out. There weren't that many people on it. I actually had record uh, label, I would say, interviews or meetings like Jam Master Jay's sons uh, from Run DMC. They really were fans of my music when I was like really young. And they brought me to New York and kind of like introduced me to record guys. And some of them were cool, but they always wanted me to like do something like wear clothes I didn't wear, like Hollister ever And I was like, I'm, what do you want me to get beat up in the hood or some shit? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't even wear that now. Uh, oh. Man. So, the, and then it was like always like a little gimmick. And then even one time they flew me from when I moved to LA for music, they flew me back to New York and told me stop rapping about politics. Even though I didn't even know I rapped about politics. I just, Eminem rapped about politics sometimes. I just thought I was rapping about everything. So that's kind of what happened was I, I kind of feel like now looking back on it, there was this game that they were playing where, yeah, I had talent and I had some views, but it was like, will you listen to like what we're telling you to do or will you not say certain things? And I never would. So I feel like it never, doors really never opened, but I'm not a victim or anything. It's all, it's all good. Then 2016 hit, it was like Bernie versus Hillary. Trump was coming out. Everything was hot on social media and I had an opinion. So I, I just started doing it naturally, but actually it wasn't like I was just doing rap and I kind of crossed over. I was always kind of politically intertwined. And uh, like, for example, when Ron Paul ran, I didn't even know he was a Republican or Libertarian. I, it meant nothing to me. I just had good instinct. And I was like, that guy is more honest mm -hmm. and they don't like that guy. You know, like I had, I had that vision even when I rapped and I would, I rapped about Ron Paul one time. So I maybe like record execs were like, yo, don't make fun of Obama. I was like, oh, I, I didn't mean to, I, I wasn't trying to be rude. It's just Eminem was so crazy. I, I thought being crazy was cool, you know? So that's kind of how I got there. Just rapping, following kind of my soul. And then 2016 election, just like social media was hot with, Every everything just seems so much bigger than what was the first uh that's crazy. So it's very similar to how I like started getting into certain things. What was the first Ron Paul clip you saw? That for me it was the what if clip that he did, uh, where he talked about like what if we got invaded when he did this whole mm. scenario and kind of painted this picture, like, oh shit, like mm. uh this I never heard anybody present things this way. That sounds kind of honest. Right. 
I was young at the time. I remember because I was very familiar with the internet and I was on the internet probably since I was 10 years old. So I was pretty good at like understanding trends. I could just tell that when I heard him speak, I can't think of a specific thing. I was like, oh, he's authentic. And I could tell at the time that they were trying to blacklist him. Kind of like how with Trump, instead of blacklisting him, they just talked about him and hated on him. With Ron Paul, it's like, let's just pretend like he doesn't even exist. And it kind of worked, you know, because he was, to me, the coolest one. But I just, I felt like I could see the establishment media just like putting a lid on his like character. And that bothered me because I feel like I always had a good like judgment of character. I was like, just let the guy compete, you know, if you beat him, you beat him. But stop, stop like trying to put a, you know, a shadow. Of now, that. as a kid, were you, what got you into even being interested in that? Were you interested in it from the jump in, a, in high school? Or was it the rap that led to it? Like, what got you yeah. into that? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say drugs because, you know, I don't know if that's like the right p- proper answer, but I do know, like, I did smoke marijuana. I did experiment with like LSD, stuff like that. And I remember I just like, thought about things a little bit differently. Maybe I did before that as well, but people like Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, I'm not saying I agree with everything, Alex, but like he would say some stuff and then I would kind of ask people about it or like even like Joe Rogan would say some like weird trippy stuff. And then people just always would say like, you're, especially back then, you're a conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, but you didn't answer the question. Like, I'm not saying it's right, but do you, ha- that's all? Like, what What if the government uses the Patriot Act to then spy on you in 10 years? And you're like, oh no, that's just for the Muslims and the terrorists. And you're like, uh, like everyone's felt so normy to me. Like, and I, I always just felt like, I was like, I feel like I'm so alone because mm. I just never saw things that way. So maybe it was that or just. Were you a counter authority kid? Were you that kid in class where right. the teacher's like, everybody do this? And you're like, why? <laughs> yeah, why? Yes, for sure. That that was a part of it too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and to, to get even deeper, I mean, like my parents divorced when I was like three or four. And I always just got in trouble since like kindergarten. Like I was just like a, I was a good kid, but I just didn't listen. I think even now I don't really listen to the sense of like, I like to play sports. I like to, I don't like to like sit in a cubicle for nine hours and I was never a good like employee. So that's been since I was in kindergarten, maybe it stems from that. But in hindsight, I'm glad because I remember one time in school, they had like four answers and there was one answer and she said, it's A. And I said, well, isn't B right too? And I remember the teacher was like sixth grade. She goes, well, B is right too. And I'm like, so do I get credit? She goes, no. I was like, why? She goes, A is like more right. And that was like, I, am, I was like, am I smarter than my teacher? You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this chick's retarded. You know, you know like, it's like, so like, even as a young kid, it's like, not every teacher was a winner. Some, some, of them were, some of them were great, but like, I just, yeah, I didn't listen ever. And I, I feel vindicated now where I'm like, I'm glad I didn't listen because I don't know. If it don't make sense, it don't make sense. What's the work career look like? So out of high school, I know you're rapping and stuff like that, but how did you how did you survive? How did you make money? What what got you to here in the in, with work? Uh shout out to my mom. She's a hard ass, you know. So she had me working when I was fifteen, like doing five dollar an hour jobs. I grew up on a farm. I worked on a farm. I worked at a supermarket. I dropped out of school. I did an overnight stocking, like, you know, late night hours. Uh, I, I probably had like 20 jobs. And then when I moved to LA, I started kind of just using my social media skills to try to get jobs and stuff. But um, I dropped out of school and I just started working at a library. I worked at like ShopRite. It's on the East Coast. You know, it's like a, a Kroger, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, for people who aren't familiar. And I just just kept working, kept working. So I always just did whatever I had to do. But I always was rapping on the side. And I always had like, I would say, and maybe you guys have a similar story, but to people that aren't doing what they're doing, like I spent from the time I was 17 to like 30, every hour that I wasn't working and, and making money to pay rent and stuff, doing what I loved in college all the time, where it's like some people are like, oh, it's not working out. It's like, dude, I put more work in from the time I was 18 to 20 than you have in your entire life and you want it to work. Like, how bad do you want it? So even when I was working like double shifts, triple shifts, I'd always then like rap on the way home, put my little camera up and try to like record a freestyle. So I've been just like, I always had like a hustler mentality for sure. You grew up on the East Coast. Yeah. Where, where, where'd you grow up? You said you grew up on a farm. I had no idea. Uh, in New Jersey, actually. So, yeah, I'm, I moved around a lot, but my stepfather is a farm manager. So I lived on a farm and I don't want to sound like I'm that big of a hard ass because I was kind of growing up. I was like, shit, I'm a soccer player. I play sports. I was like, I'm an athlete. I'm not trying to be a farmer. <laughs> but as I grew up and I, you start to realize it and I needed money, I was like, all right, I'll work on the farm and stuff. It's tough work. But yeah, my, my stepfather's a beast. He just like can do anything. He can like any animal, any, uh, you know, 
I would say crops. He can just like resurrect it out of nowhere, make a whole thing. He's uh, he's like a professional farmer. And and what brought you to L.A. was the music. Did yeah. you have anything set up, or did you just say I'm going to L.A.? A, le a lesbian couple from Beverly Hills saw my videos and they hit me up. I was broke. I was actually in West Virginia at the time. I went to school, dropped out, went back there because it was cheap. Just was like nothing was happening. Like life was like in kind of I was like, I'm in a weird space. I don't really know what I'm doing. I have no money. They saw my video. They said, hey, you can come out here. We'll record your album for free. No contract. We, we want to manage you. But to gain our trust, you know, we'll, we'll do it all. And then we'll like pitch you to our friends and you can stay here. And I talked to them and like, everyone's like, are you afraid to go out? I'm like, am I afraid of a lesbian couple in Beverly Hills? No, I'm not. I, I live in a bad area of West Virginia. You know, like, I, no, I'm not at all afraid. And they were really nice and it was cool and it didn't work out. But it was kind of like a leap of faith where it's like mm. they really did set up studio time, two weeks. They paid for it. They let me stay there. They did see what they could do. And uh, it was like a really just like kind of like spur of the moment. Like, I ain't got shit. Let me, let's just hop on a plane and do it. So they kind of held it down for a while just really nice ladies and then uh ended up just like moving on my own out there was so what, ha what happened from there did you still have a relationship with them or i haven't talked to them in a while i, I you know I, I was young at the time i don't know there was definitely like a miscommunication like i would say once they kind of pitched it to one friend and they didn't like it they kind of like didn't know what to do and like honestly maybe like they brought me out and were like oh, i don't want this kid living in my house you know i want to get on with my life nothing wrong with that but it got to a space where like i always believed in myself and if someone said oh i don't like it i'm not just gonna give up so it's like you know if you're not into it as much as me uh then i'm just gonna go on and, and do it somewhere else but you know they they were nice to even make the attempt and right. i i think in in hindsight they weren't super, super uh, experienced like in music or anything. They just really liked me and wanted to give it a shot. Like they worked kind of in film and stuff. So it was just kind of like, let's see if it works. And uh, I would say it got me there. But I, at a certain point, I wasn't trying to just like stay with them for years if things weren't working out anyway. So they did what they could do. Nothing really, no one really bit on me. No one wanted to pay me or anything. So it's like, all right, I'll, I'll move, pay for my own stuff and get out of your way. Was so, it was amicable that? when you guys left or was did you... I think it was, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I'm cool with them, and definitely like the more I grow up, I'm like that was cool what they did. I don't know if they're mad at me or not. In, in fact, actually, one of them commented on my Twitter like yesterday, so I think they're cool too. It, I was like 23 or 24 at the time, so it's one of those things where it's just like same with like certain exes and stuff. Like I'm like, man, she sucked, and then like when I was like 25, I was like, actually, I wasn't really a real man at the time. It's like <laughs> it's kind of my fault, you know. Like looking back at yeah. it, so with that, I was so young that. Uh, I, I think in hindsight, I'm very grateful for what they did. And yeah. I, I hope they, they like me too. Cause I was a pretty easy guy. I, didn't, I don't think I did too much. I didn't like, go out or wasn't like a crazy. Mm -hmm. What was guest. the, what was the platform you started off on? I know MySpace, like when I was in college, yeah. it was like the first <laughs> thing. Right. And then it was like, YouTube kind of came a little bit later, but right. like, where'd they even find the video at? Real quick, I just with MySpace, it cracked me up because being from New Jersey, like, remember when the Guido thing was happening? Yeah. I was like, yeah. wait, are those real? And then, like, on MySpace, like, my friends, like, all, like some of my friends were, like, turning into Guidos and they were posting, like, with, like, the dye and, like, their hair is, but I was like, yo, it's, like, such a crazy culture, man. MySpace, <laughs> Guido oh, culture. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was Shout real. out to Tom. We, uh, <laughs> we're trying to get him on at some point. Real <laughs> pimp, dude. He's, yeah, he's laying he's low with the cash, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Smart guy. But he's, a lot of musicians started out on MySpace, right? Yeah, I had a MySpace. I would say I'm trying to think of like my first really break probably was on YouTube I, I there was a contest these guys wax and herbal tea they're two twins and they're really good rappers and they would just freestyle in the car and they kind of inspired me because they were some of the first ones to get like a million views a couple million views just car freestyling and we all did it in our hometowns but I'm like oh you could put it online so they had a contest I entered it I won uh, my first contest I entered and then I got some internet clout I, I, I would say within a year posting on YouTube I had a million views and I had a hundred thousand downloads of my songs wow. and I, no money I just gave them out for free on mixtapes and I didn't even have a microphone so like uh -huh. that's what a hustler I was I, I, and then eventually I had a million downloads and I was like pretty well known underground rapper and people didn't even know all I had was a laptop like a I'm, MacBook or whatever I was just using the built in microphone and trying to mix it good wow. so yes yeah, fir first it was YouTube and then for the political stuff, it was actually like Facebook. Um, hmm. But MySpace, I never really had it popping, you know, <laughs> sliding in DMs, just getting left. Yeah, and you know, know how it was kind of weak. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, <laughs> so you, I mean, when you were young, like all of us, kind of naive, and then you start, you 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 commented on, you know, getting into the music industry and being like, oh, they want me to 
crazy is cool, but only the kind of crazy they want you to be. Right. Or, you know, it's okay to comment, but only if the comments are approved type of deal. Did, did you start to like, because you go from naive to like, oh, this is kind of weird. Was there a moment where you're like, oh, this is, this is not cool or this is a lot different than I thought? Yeah. I, but at the same time, I always liked like underground rappers like Jedi Mind Tricks, Immortal Technique. And I'd kind of decided that, you know, I'm, I'm, I might have to make it underground. So when they told me to do stuff, I never wanted like money, cars. Like I wasn't like that type of rapper. So I was mentally prepared for to, to take the hard road. So I, I never got enticed. And I think that bothered them even more. Like there were certain people like, yo, let's go. Let's fly to Asia. Like, like trying to give me trips and stuff. I'm like, dude, I'm 21. I don't fucking want to do that. You know, I don't even know. <laughs> you but like maybe if i was like 35 and broke it sound cool but yeah. you know they were always trying to like give me stuff and do stuff and i'm like if it's not i'm not dressing up like i'm not like a little like puppet you know like i'm not gonna wear abercrombie and get like a bunch of like so that's kids. that's really <laughs> rare do you where does that yeah. come from because that to be 21 years old and growing up on a farm and then you have these people that are throwing flights across the world to at you and trying <laughs> right i mean what was it where where does that come from that ability to do that i don't know if i could have done that yeah. i think it would have been really tough for me right. to, to say no to that i guess at first maybe i would thank my parents i think they did a good job instilling good uh you know my, a mindset into me and then also i don't know just my soul and spirit i just i never wanted that stuff and it's interesting now and i i feel like i have the last laugh in, in the most humble way possible because uh I knew what I was going to do was going to work. And I was like, I feel like it would be bigger if I was actually myself and, and people could connect to that. Like if you dress me up in Abercrombie, like you might sell a few record, but then I'm going to get hit with tomatoes and, and I'm going to oh, be a drug yeah. addict in five years. Like it's almost like it's, it's too fake where like you might hit a demographic, but eventually it'll fall apart. So I always took the long road. I just was like, that's never, that's not going to work. How I'm going to do it's going to work. And I sat in meetings, like I have, I have so many friends that work with like major labels and stuff. And I remember I was sitting like this and they were like, what type of rapper do you see yourself as? And they, they went around all the rappers, right? And it was like a pretty high level A&R. And I was like, you know, I want to be like as fire as Kendrick with the lyrics, but, but soulful, but also make hits like, you know, and he's like, you can't do that. And I was like, what do you mean? I can't do that. I already do that. And, and like the guy hated me, you know what I'm saying? Like I was supposed to just get on my knees and be like, oh, can I lick your shoes, bro? But I, I don't care who the guy was. I was like, dude. And then I kept just doing it my way. And like it, now I look at all these A&Rs and I'm like, who are these guys? No one gives a shit about them. Or like, who's the artist that they told me was going to be bigger than me? I forget the guy's name, you know? So it's like, I, t I, don't, I don't know where it came from, but I always had that chip on my shoulder where I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not dressing up like that. I'm not... Even they'd be like, oh, we don't know if you can do this. We don't want to sign you because you're just doing it on YouTube. I'm like, well, if I have this many views on YouTube and I have no microphone and I have a million downloads, what do you think I could do with a microphone? You know, like I always yeah. had like an attitude, which doesn't uh, <laughs> fare well in business all the time. But uh, yeah, it worked out, you know. When you way. when you started to kind of, uh, I don't want to say switch gears, but when you started to comment on current events and policy uh when did that first start to really take off and then when that happened were you like what's this i would say bernie versus hillary i was enticed not by bernie's policy but by the fact that he seemed more authentic and the whole establishment wanted to kick him out so i kind of like rallied behind him just from like a ron paul type angle i know they're totally different policies but like just him being the underdog them trying to like basically cheat him in my opinion and then once I hit 26, all this happened at once. Like Trump got in office. I realized he wasn't as bad as everyone was saying he was. Like he wasn't like the next coming of whoever. And then also I turned 26 and like all the things that I was being told by the left and Bernie, like, oh, the healthcare, the bill, the billionaires and the one percent, the one percent. Wow. And it's like, <laughs> it's, is that AI? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. About that. <laughs> and uh, I turned 26 and I had no money. And in California, there's a mandate where you have to buy health insurance. In other states, you don't. So like it was like four thousand dollars for health insurance that I'd go and use it and it wouldn't work. Long story short, I'm like, I'm broke and I'm losing money. Like this is this is not the billion. I'm not a billionaire, bro. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I didn't know what conservative or liberal meant. I didn't pay attention in school. I didn't I knew that both parties were fake, but it wasn't I didn't know what libertarian I didn't know Ron Paul was even right wing or libertarian. I just knew he was authentic. So all the policy hit me when I turned 26 and I started paying taxes, paying health care. And it was like the Trump era of like Trump would say something and I'm a reasonable guy. And then like how they would react. And I'm like, you don't have to like them, but like you said that, or he said that, you said that. Yeah. And like, I just, I just thought the left just like, you know, they went like nuts where 
I was like, actually, what he said kind of made sense. Like, Can I say that? And everyone's like, you can't say that. I'm like, why? You know, it just like it all kind of just like came at me at once. And then real quick, that was like my biggest video ever, I feel like, because of also how I look and like Republicans often don't portray their message well enough. I made a video, it was really well thought out. And I said, here's why Trump's not that bad. And that here's actually a bunch of like liberal things he's doing that de like prison reform that Democrats used to want and like human trafficking, whatever. And that video got like 30 million views. Uh, because that's the I one I think I saw. I came from the perspective of like, I didn't even vote for the guy, but like you guys are acting crazy. And that one like blew up because it was so uh, just like reasonable and neutral. Like I wasn't like build a wall, you piece of shit. I was like, you know, I was like, uh, it's not that crazy guys. Like you got to calm down. You yeah. just said something that Sal always says, which is, can the, I say the curse? Sorry. Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, <laughs> that, you, that conservatives are really terrible at selling their ideas and liberals are much better politicians than they are. Do you feel the same way? I think so. And yeah. I definitely think so. I think they've figured out how to seem compassionate and sometimes even be compassionate. And I think that conservatives, even in the Trump world that I'm seeing now, it, that kind of bothers me a little bit. I don't care. Like, I do actually like people that are like, get the fuck off my lawn. I don't care what, what you think. Like, I do like that on a personal level, but on a media level, it's like you do want to you want to get through to the people who don't yeah. agree with you already. So like sometimes I feel like people are just like, this is what I think. We all agree. Ha ha. Screw you. Screw you. Ha ha. Libtard. Ha ha. Like, look at these college kids. It's like, I don't know. I think that's a weird trend. I get it. Like it's viral and, and you're educating people in college. But like if you're 33, like shouldn't you be able to debate an 18 year old like liberal chick? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, oh, I crushed that lady. I was like, <laughs> bro, I would crush myself when I was 19. Did I embarrass myself? Like, I was an idiot. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, hi, shit. Yeah. Uh, I still am. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but smarter. No. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do think that the left is better at communicating and like kind of faking a moral high ground. I'll give a quick example when it comes to like the environment. Not all conservatives do this or Republicans, but like the left will be like, okay, we're destroying the environment, which is true in many ways. And so this is why everything we say about climate change is real. And then sometimes the Republican response is like, ah, screw you. I don't give a fuck. You know, like yeah. I'm just going to do what I want. And it's like, I went on Fox one time and I was like, well, there's volcanoes under the ice glaciers. So like maybe it's melting from that, but there's also a full blown volcano under it. Like that might be contributing to the ice melt. And I, I like constructed an argument that like, if you told it to a liberal, they'd be like, oh, that, oh, you don't like just want to kill penguins or something, you know, yeah. or it's like, fuck that turtle. I want my straw. You're like, <laughs> I get it. The straws are annoying, but yeah, there definitely is a way to like relay the message to actually convince people and wake them up out of the slumber versus just kind of pushing them further in the corner. And then both sides see the extreme or, or the angry on both sides. And then that makes them feel more right. Cause like, if I looked at like left-wing lunatics all day, it would make me feel a lot better. I'm, mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm not that, but there's enough crazy right-wingers also to go around that they're looking at yeah. to make them feel right. Yeah. That for, for me, it was, uh, I had a client who I remember he, he was asking me just general questions. Cause at the time I was a kid, I was young. I must have been, you know, early twenties. Uh, might even been a, a, a nineteen. And instead of asking me um, like popular media questions, he just asked me general questions like, "How do you feel about like business owners and businesses?" And I'm the son of immigrants, and my parents had to work very hard. And I think, you know, I think they do a good job. They're trying to work. They're trying to do their best. And what do you think about like if someone came in and told them? how to operate their business. Right. So I think the consumer, the, the, the customer should tell them how to operate their business, not the government. Like, okay. And then they would ask me other questions. Like, do you think people should be able to say whatever they want? Um, you know, and, and, and that's okay. And you, what, you know, the consequences are if people don't like it, then it's up to them. To so he kept asking me this series of questions. And then he told me how each one was on each side. Mm. Like this one's over here. This one's over here. This one's, I'm like, Oh, I don't really agree with anybody. Right. And he mm -hmm. goes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, you know, <laughs> yeah. so that's, that's when I was conundrum. like, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute, what the hell is going on? And it kind of no got place me for the rest of us. Yeah. It got me to kind of like, look at things. Did you, did you have, cause I remember specifically feeling like this at first I was not aware of anything. Then I started becoming aware of the, the game and then I became really like sad, like, Oh crap. <laughs> yeah. Like what is happening yeah, it's here? All big manipulation. Yeah. Did you ever, did you get to that point where the more you learn, the more you're like, Oh shit, there's really nowhere yeah. we could go. <laughs> yeah. I had a full loop and I'm back to where I started. Like I started at like, you know, there's certain things above politicians and both parties are fake. And then I kind of had a loop of like, Oh, these guys are going to be really different. 
And then I, like you said, I started seeing how both sides could be manipulated. And then I'm back to like, oh yeah, both, both parties are kind of still the same way. (laughs) Like I thought that certain people were going to change, but there's, there's definitely times where like emotions are high and I, I could see the tricks that they use and both sides are just so like stubborn. Like I must be right because they're wrong. And it's like, they are, no, they are wrong. Like the left is going nuts in the cities. They don't know how to run it. Yeah, I agree. But also you just got tricked over there, but like you don't want to admit it because you're right about that. So yeah, it, it does get to a point where even as someone with like a big voice, I'm, sometimes I don't even feel like posting. I'm like, what's the point? You know, people yeah. are just, yeah. they're going to wake up at their own, on their own terms. How yeah. do you filter all of that in terms of like taking, taking it all in? I know you have to kind of like, you feel like you want to report on a lot of these things to your right. audience and it's sort of like what you've been known for, but, but how do you, how do you like sort of block out enough so you can feel like you stay sane? Yeah, I guess I, guess I kind of just go with my intuition. Cause every time I wake up, I don't really have a team or anything. It's just whatever I want to talk about, however I want to package it. And then sometimes I just, I'm just not in the mood to argue, you know, that <laughs> it's like, mm. I don't feel like, I don't, I just don't feel like it that day. So I, I guess I kind of just wing it. Yeah. Just go with how I feel. Did, um, so at one point you were like super, I don't want to say super, but you were very, you were pro Trump, pro, pro-ish Trump. And then you went on the opposite and you're like, no, no, Trump's not the guy. This happened during the pandemic when all of this started happening. How, so how, what was that like for you during the pandemic? Well, Cause that was yeah. a crazy, that was a crazy time. I think a lot of right. people uh, have been traumatized through that and don't might, maybe don't want to admit just how much it affected their, their health or their mental health. Right. What was that like for you? I'll take it back just real quick because like there were a few things that Trump did because I was like, overall, he's doing a good job. There were a few things that he did that I disagreed with. Like I remember in 2018, he said, I'll never sign another one of these spending bills because every year, no matter who's in office, they do these multi-trillion yeah. dollar bills that nobody reads. And Trump was like, yo, I don't want to sign this. It's crazy. I'm never going to sign it again. And then 2019, he signed it again. Right. And, mm-hmm. and and he was like, oh, I raised the smoking age. And it's like, wow, cool, bro. <laughs> you yeah. raised the smoking age. Like he just started acting like it was so cool. And and then I remember people were pissed at me for for like reporting on that. And then like Trump and DeSantis passed these laws that I I perceived as kind of like opening the door to like hate speech rules. And I, I reported on that and people got pissed at me. And that was the first like, oh, damn, like, you know, people don't want to hear this shit. They only mm-hmm. want to hear when I agree with him. And then the pandemic happened. And I would say after 15 days to slow the spread, I literally, one of my favorite tweets I've ever did, it was before they locked the country down and like people were like, it's prophetic. It's not prophetic. I could act like I'm a secret wizard or whatever. I just read research and I saw what's going on. And I was like, here's what they're going to do. They're going to do mandated vaccines before they had vaccines. I said, government lockdowns, you know, bigger speed censorship. I called it and I said, life, uh, life will never be the same. And Trump doesn't have a magic plan. And my comments are, Trump does have a plan, you piece of garbage. And I'm like, okay, whatever. (laughs) Uh, and then after he looked at the chart and extended the lockdown, this is when I kind of started parting ways with them because I always just try to be accurate and I'm not like a professional dick rider. And then I started realizing in the Republican movement, there's like real journalists, real analysts, like real, you know, people, and then just professional politicians pretending to be journalists and, and media people. And I remember Trump said, Sweden should have locked down. They're regretting their decision not to lock down. And as somebody that's way like in, more into liberty, I was like, wait, you think Sweden should have locked down? And when I'm tweeting that, now I'm arguing with people that I'm friends with because they think it's cool that Trump told Sweden to lock down because they like Trump. And it it, it turned into this whole thing where I was like, wow. And then when he did Operation Warp Speed, I'm like, listen, as you know, a person that does think that capitalism is pretty solid, you know, that's not capitalist. That's, that's socialist. They're giving $18 billion of government money to the pharmaceutical industry. And then Trump and Biden both bought hundreds of millions of doses. So outside of the mandates, which is another travesty, it, it's still a socialist scheme and Trump's really proud of it. And it's like, I know, I'm not saying all pharmaceuticals are bad. I'm not saying they don't do anything, but as you know, it's like they're everywhere on the television, everywhere you turn, everything's a pill. We're one of two countries that they're just promoting like doctor prescribed pills that you can't even get without a doctor. And it's too much. And people are fat and people are, you know, depressed and people are overdosing on opioids and opioids and fentanyl. And like now you're giving this industry $18 billion of taxpayer money that we don't even have a choice of. And now they're shoving it down our throat because it's free because it's not free. And I'm like, I thought socialism sucked. That's what Turning Point USA says. And Trump says, 
but everyone started getting mad at me. So that it, it's funny because like, I really didn't go through some sort of like metamorphic shift or I turned into like freaking Rachel Maddow or something like everyone's pretending like I just kind of stuck to what I believed and Trump started doing all this other stuff. And then after the pandemic, like when he was out of office, he pretty much just ran around conservative media saying like it was the greatest achievement mm -hmm. of mankind. It saved a mm -hmm. hundred million lives, like stupid stuff that like not even Bill Gates would say. So then it became sort of a thing where there were people that liked Trump and voted for Trump that disagreed with him. And how I feel, it's almost like a religion where it's like just trust in him. And, you know, even say like a Ron Paul if Ron Paul did something I didn't agree with, he earns my trust by doing things I agree with. He doesn't do things that I don't like, and then I'm just supposed to blindly follow him. Like, trust is earned. Even with me, I don't say, hey, guys, if I say something, believe everything I say because you like me. I'm, it's like, check it. You know, if like you like me for a reason, and if I ever fail, then, you know, like an athlete that's call past his right? prime, call yeah. me out. Tell yeah. me I'm, I'm, I'm a has-been. Don't just blindly worship what I'm saying. Respect me because what I'm saying is true. And that's that was like the whole disconnect. And, and it's been, a I would say, chaotic in the conservative movement ever since 2020 for multiple reasons. Yeah, one of the more dangerous things that I, I try to talk about is when uh, you have you have somebody you like pass a policy that you like because it's a guy you like and it's for a reason you like and you and people can't put, conceptualize how that policy could potentially be used by someone you don't like. So for example, you got, a, let's say you got someone in office who you love and you love their support. And they're like, listen, these are the bad guys. We're going to pass these laws, get these bad guys. And you're like, I like that. But then nobody goes, wait a minute, those laws aren't going to go away after we got the bad guys. Right. How can that law be used in a way that I maybe don't support? Right. Like that, that's the part that I think people, because what happens is the next guy comes in, the next guy comes in. Nothing goes away. These, right. these laws get you know piled on top. You brought up the Patriot Act. That's a great example. Right, it's still here. Right, they're still spying on everybody. They they can do this. They can they you know the National Defense Authorization Act. They could throw you in jail without a jury or a trial and never tell anybody. They could keep mm. you in there forever. Yeah, cool if we catch a, a dangerous terrorist. But is that the kind of power you want anybody to have? What if right. somebody who's really evil is in office, which will happen? Right. That's the kind of stuff that really bothers me. I think people have trouble with, what do you think that is? Do you think it's just that we're just just wired to want to follow right. somebody blindly? What do you think that is? I want to real quick on that note, because I just, I don't like to argue that much, but because of all like the war propaganda coming out in the last couple of days, all I said on the one page is I was like, hey, remember the Patriot Act? Like, I, it feels like the same script and it's like emotions are high, like there's real tragedy, but just watch out for this. And someone commented, he goes, well, dude, screw you, man, because, you know, Republicans passed it. Yeah, but it was liberals who abused it. And it's like, exactly. You know, like, <laughs> just like you said, it's like, yeah, Republicans passed it. And then eventually the power, like everything, exactly what you said, every time you pass anything, whether it's Trump, Biden, Obama, the other side's going to get that power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, that doesn't make it right. That means you're stupid. You pass something that, but what is that? I, I think it's the tribalism for sure uh, that both sides are just like fighting these like little proxy wars against each other. Even in the conservative movement, now you have like Trump people fighting DeSantis people some of it's righteous, but like, it, it's like, right. They're all like ride or die with their guy. And I'm watching both of them. I'm like, I have a preference, although it can shift, uh, based on like what they do, but like these people, they're just like being the same type of hypocrites that they hate in each other. Like just anything I got to do for my guy. Mm -hmm. Now they're looking at Trump rally saying there's not enough people there and there's not enough people there and he's wearing boots. And it's like mm -hmm. all the stupid crap they did to Trump, they're doing to each other. I think it's tribalism, but yeah, I, I think that, you know, and this is probably unpopular to some, but like with George Bush, you know, he was the American patriot and he tricked Republicans and now they know they got tricked by George Bush, but it's a little too late. Then Obama came in and he was like the cool guy for eight years and then they, and now there's Trump and everybody doesn't want to admit that they, that it could happen again, but I'm seeing the same type of like 2000s Patriot Act type of stuff going now, like Republican pages posting like, why aren't they on the FBI watch list? Here's, literally yesterday yeah. I saw people at a protest, they go, why aren't they on the FBI watch list? And I'm like, bro, you don't have to like them. You don't have to respect them. But like you're on the FBI watch list now because you did that to terrorists in the 2000s. And now they label you a terrorist because if you expand the definition of terrorists to include 50 different groups that aren't terrorists, eventually they're going to say Trump supporters are terrorists. So mm -hmm. it's like the same Trump supporters that I know and I like that are complaining that the feds are like investigating them now 
are calling to investigate random innocent people at a protest because they're siding with the wrong policy. And I, I get tensions are high right now, but it's like they're making the same mistakes that they made during the th during the Bush era. Yeah. Do you think there's a guiding principle that could help? Because, it, you know, it's like uh, I'm against, uh, for example, I'm against capital punishment. I think, um, you know, le you know, legislating executing someone, in my opinion, is a bad idea. Now, somebody may come up to me and say, well, what if somebody killed your kids? What would you want to do? And I'm like, I'd want to kill them my own hands with right. my own bare hands, right? And so that's a human, natural human emotion. It's like, right. I have a principle, but if you get me scared enough or mad enough or upset enough, I will break it. And even though, if, for whatever reason, because th this is how I feel. Right. Do you, like, is there a guiding principle someone could follow to help them, you know, make these decisions that aren't going to backfire? I think it all comes down to self-awareness. And even with like the type of stuff that you guys do, I tr and I'm not just saying this because I'm here. I think people that are like building people's bodies and minds is more important than politicians because it's like hurt people, hurt people, people that don't take care of themselves. How are you going to take care of the whole world? Like, you know, people are making fun of Chris Christie and he makes some good points, but it, it is also like, you're like, dang, that guy's kind of large mm -hmm. and God bless him. You know what I'm saying? But like, how are you going to take care of the whole country? You can't even take care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, so I think if people kind of built themselves up, um, I think there's a lot of that now. Depression's at an all-time high. Obesity seems like it's at an all-time high. You know, divorces are at an all-time, like all these bad things. And then it's like, we expect these politicians that are so amazing, even though our country's in massive decline, like we're gonna get Trump versus Biden again, you know, 2.0, because we need to kind of build ourselves up. So I think also, as a person, if you're honest to yourself, it's harder for other people to lie to you. When you're weak, like say you're just like strung out and you're, it's easier, like you're more desperate, but like when you're comfortable, it, you know, you're like- Harder it, to manipulate. Harder to manipulate. So like it, it all comes from that where I'm at the point now, it's like, if I don't want to go somewhere, I don't go somewhere. I don't give a shit who pressures me, but like in my twenties, I might go, you know, mm -hmm. cause I got nothing going on. So I think it really stems from that, uh, like self-awareness and self accountability, which apparently is extremely rare yeah. in, in these times, you know. Do you do you who do you think is or, or pulling the strings? Who do you think is is really making the decisions? How much trouble you want to get in? No, yeah. just, <laughs> I'm not, not saying down it. the rabbit hole. No. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I will say that you know, on the self accountability tip, it's like if you don't buy it, they can't sell it. And like the fact that so many people are buying it, we could play the victim. Yes, there's a lot of propaganda manipulation, but. I think at the end of the day, we're in control of our own destiny. So all, everything they do needs enough people to to buy it. But I definitely think there's people above the, the politicians. And it feels like to me at this point that they the politicians are almost like professional middlemen in the sense of like, what's going to make people feel like there's going to be change, you know, like, okay, well, Bush is like the American guy who's going to like fight the terrorists. Obama's like the cool guy who's like half black and like likes Kendrick Lamar and plays basketball. And he's kind of different. Right. And he's like really like nice, nice guy, well-spoken, whatever. And then, all right, well, you guys are tired of him. Here's this guy. And like, there's this Trump narrative now where like Trump's really going to fix it. Like maybe, but like, if you really follow the policy and stuff, there's certain things that happen anyway. So, you know, I would say there's definitely, there's definitely people that, are, are above that pay grade, you know? I would just say that certain industries, certain groups, certain media organizations, and the I would say the more you figure it out, uh, the more they get mad at you. Mm. Do you think they're, <laughs> do you think whoever or whatever, we talk about this sometimes, like cause these guys talk like that and I always go like, who's who's they? Do you think it's a, a group of malicious people that are, have ill will or do you think it's just greed? That there's people trying to line because I feel like it's greed. I think that everything goes back to the money and they're just trying to line their pockets. I think it's part that it's part human nature. I think it is part malevolence. But at the end of the day, I would say in certain countries, like if you look at what I'm going to say might be controversial, but and I'm not going to like promote these countries, but there's a reason that the elites want to go after them, like say like China and Russia. I'm not a fan of China or Russia. I'm American. I love America. But like Russia has a strong national identity and like they don't allow that much foreign influence, I'm not saying what they do is right or they're amazing. But like any country that doesn't allow massive foreign influence in 
will become a target, even though China's like super powerful and, and super corrupt, and I don't think they treat their uh, people well, you'll notice that like, there's only one thing that George, George Soros says they're the biggest threat, and so does Vivek, and so does Trump, and so does DeSantis, and so does Democrats, they all do. And I'm not saying China's our friend, I'd much rather live here, I'm a proud American. With that being said, China is run by China. Like they don't really let a lot of shit in, you know what I'm saying? They're not doing it completely right, but they're not allowing. America, it's like we're so overrun by so much propaganda to, to point the blame at one person would be disingenuous because there's probably like a hundred different countries here, a hundred different, like pe that's why people are so scrambled because there's like, we allow everything, you know what I'm saying? We don't even have a closed border. We're allowing millions of people from a hundred plus countries to come across the border. Like there's, I have friends that report there over a hundred different countries people are coming in mm. and they're just allowing it. And none of these politicians can agree to close it, but they can agree to send foreign aid to, to multiple different countries. All of them only agree on that or, or agree on a vaccine. It's very bizarre, but I would say that there are people out there that have certain mindsets, certain religions, certain cultural trends and norms where, you know, some people really don't like Christians. Some people really don't like, you know, uh, Americans. And I do think that there's like a tanglement of different influences and entities out there. But the more I study and realize it's like, you know, how you're raised is not necessarily how everyone's raised. And there are some people and you could just see it in, in, in how everything operates where they're not, they're not operating under like what a Christian would want. Like a Christian would say like, okay, do, do it this way, go to church and like, don't curse in your rap songs. And then like the other person would be like, dress up as Satan and sodomize, you know, 15 people on, on a music video. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you know, it's like, there's competing worldviews right now. There's some people who say, believe in this God and this is the way we want to live our lives and get married. And there's some people who say, have a eight, you know what I'm saying? Have a brothel sodomize everybody and, and dress up as the devil and, and laugh in the face of these people and push pornography. You know, it's like, so there's, I think there's a lot of different competing ideologies and worldviews and different groups with different ideas of how to run a nation. And, and we're seeing like the breakdown of like, uh, I would say fake capitalism, like basically like crony capitalism, government, you know, and, and where... I, where it ends, I don't know, but I, I think it's a mixture. Sorry, long-winded. I think it's part malevolence, part human nature, and, uh, you know, part greed. Yeah, I, you know, uh, just to, to speak to that, because I think, I think a lot about that. And, you know, our, our country used to allow a lot of people in, and it was actually quite easy. You know, um, I'm, I'm the son of immigrants, and they came over here, but, but there was a, a difference back then in the sense that, and people are always like, yeah, they were all European immigrants. Like, okay, they weren't anything like each other. They went to war with each other two times. So yeah, you had Germans, Italians, you had Jewish people, Irish people. Sure. Their skin is white or whatever, but it wasn't like they were all like, we're all the same. Right. They were all very different, but they all had one common purpose. And this is what I think might not be the same today. Right. Back then everybody had different beliefs, but you came here, nobody gave you anything. All you had was opportunity. Right. So everybody that came here had the common purpose of opportunity leave us alone. We'll build our business. And if we got to figure out how to work together. Right. And that may be what's, what's missing today where people come over and maybe they get stuff and they get catered to and they get whatever. Whereas back then I was like, you come here, no problem. Right. You got to work your ass off. That's it. And we're not going to give you much. We're just going to give you the opportunity right. to pursue those things. And that led to an incredible country, right. which I think the direction is going Maybe in a different way. I'm not quite sure. I know it isn't. They don't have that same common uh, ideal uh, like we used to. Because back then it was like, yeah, okay, different religion, whatever. But everybody came here for the same reason. Like I'm here for the opportunity. Right. And we all have that in common. Right. And I think part of it, there is an agenda there where I do think because like even looking at like old videos of this guy G. Edward Griffin. I don't know if you if you've ever heard him, but he wrote the a book uh, Creature on Jekyll Island, yeah. Or, yeah, 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 about the Federal Reserve. This guy's the biggest mm -hmm. G. Like he had a black and white video from 1969 where he's reading a communist book from the 1930s. And it's like identical to what's happening today. Yeah. And he explained yeah. where he was like, they're using certain racial division. They're doing this, they're doing, they're, yeah. because their idea is like, break it all down, screw it all up, and then they're gonna come in and do it. So I think a lot of this stuff is, is not natural and it is planned and orchestrated. But at the same time, this is a philosophical question that I think most people won't bring up how much would have broken down over time anyway? Because let's just say you're a Christian in 1950s, right? Like, how are you going to cheat on your wife? How is she going to cheat on you? 
uh, you got to do it with like someone or in the area because you're not really going that many places. They got to call the house phone. You remember when someone called the house phone? The husband could pick up, the hell, who the fuck is <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but now every chick, every guy's got a cell phone. So now, you know, myself or my girlfriend, it's like she's not stuck in the house with a, with a ring phone. We got access. She could go to Dubai. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so it's yeah. like there's so much more opportunity out there where even without malevolence that I do think is a part of it, how much of this would have broke down anyway? Because it's like, there's just so many options and so, and so much where like any person, it would be like a guy who says, I would never like say some guy that's like just ugly and fat. Like, I'd never cheat on my wife. And it's like, you might be right. You're right. You might be that guy. But what if I put you in a room with 10 hot chicks from every country and they're on top of you? Now, would you? I yeah. bet eight out of 10 of those guys would. And I'm not saying that's good. It's just like, that's the world we live in now. There's so much at our fingertips with technology mm -hmm. that it's hard to like maintain uh, traditional values. But I know you guys see it too in this industry and just in the in the world. It's like everyone's running back to tradition now. It's like the trad because yeah, yeah. people are like, fuck, my cell yeah. phone's pissing me off. Yeah. I'm, I'm all over the place. I don't want to have sex with everybody. I just want to like be celibate and go find a, a trad wife and make butter. You know, like yeah. that's becoming more popular because people are freaked out by like the options. Mm. Well, something I think about too is like how much of these competing ideologies, how much of that do you think is really authentic versus, you know, because what you've seen in terms of how they've been able to use bots and how they've been able to use right. uh, a lot of like um, uh, fake groups and things to really influence culture. And then the culture becomes a reflection of what we see on the internet. Right. Uh, so how much of that do you think like where we're at in terms of like our actual culture versus what's being portrayed? I mean, I definitely think there's a lot of, I, I do think there's a lot of like false influence, but let's say like with the schools real quick, like the left winger would say, okay, we're making the schools LGBT because it's more compassionate and we need to like, you know, there's going to be kids that are gay and that don't know they're gay. So we're being nice. You know, the left winger would be like, we, we need to just be more thoughtful. And the right winger say like, that's messed up. Like, you know, the kid doesn't even know who he is yet. And you're trying to like change his gender and chop off his genitalia. And then outside that left wing and right wing debate of like what to do in the schools, I'm not saying this is why they're doing it, but like, if you wanted to conquer a nation, would you want a bunch of strong men that work out like you guys? Or would you want a bunch of guys that turned into girls that couldn't even hold a gun? So mm -hmm. it's like, is mm -hmm. that randomly happening? You know, it, do, do people mean well? Maybe, but it, it's like, I do think that in certain countries, like in Russia and China, like they completely reject that. Like in China, they're making the kids stronger purposely. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In Russia, they completely reject that stuff. In America, it's like, there is gonna be less and less opposition like a weaker military, all this stuff where it's like, that's the question is like, is that completely random, just a sign of our times? Or is are, are there people in the world that are playing chess that know that over time, you know, America is going to be like one eighth as strong as it used to be when it had like an, like you were saying, people from all over, but they, they celebrated the flag and, and wanted to be a part of this country versus they wanted to like, you know, give it back. Yeah, common co common purpose. You mentioned because uh, uh, you said you 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 see trends, and obviously your business is on the internet. And you mentioned how you're talking about how people now seem to want to go back to old traditional values or whatever. Right. Do you see that as a trend? Do you see that growing? And what, what do you think is that's a consequence of? Yeah, no, that's definitely growing, and I think it's because uh, people are exhausted. Even myself, I'm. I make money online. You know what I'm saying? I've created a business online. I've done my dream life. I don't even know if I have fun on social media anymore and I should be having the most fun because it's just like, what's more fun? It's more fun to talk like this. It's more fun to be at a beach than it is to be arguing with someone. So I think people are just exhausted from the mental uh, overstimulation of technology. For example, like I don't like, and this is a problem that I have. I wake up and I'm in my bed and now I'm in the middle of an Israel-Palestine conflict on Twitter mm -hmm. and, I, and it's 9 a.m. Yep. Is that healthy for a human being to see a thousand different opinions, videos <laughs> right before you get, take a shower or, or, you know what I'm saying, or to take a drink of water? And it's like, that's the world we're all living in. So I think a lot of people are like, this is not it. And same with like casual sex and just like having a bunch of uh, partners and stuff. Like, can it be fun in some way? I'm sure. Yeah, sure. But, you know, the more like 
entanglements you have, the more your mind sort of scrambled where like, if you have a wife or you have a girlfriend, it's like, okay, I don't need to be on a dating app. I don't need to be flirting with everybody. It like makes your life more simple. So you can focus on what you actually want to do. And I think over time, like all the things that I thought were like outdated, once you hit like 30, you're like, oh no, that's the right way to do it. <laughs> you know, like it's just natural like you know, progression. You know what I'm finding interesting right now? Cause I noticed the same thing. In fact, I told these guys a while ago, I said, it's weird that it looks like stuff that was like not cool and that's like outdated. <laughs> All of a sudden people yeah. seem to be going in that direction and they're not just going into the direction of like, let's say religion, for example, that would be a traditional, you know, way of, of living or whatever, but they're picking the most traditional forms of that. It seems like right. yeah. I'm hearing people, a, a lot of people are saying, okay, I'm a Christian, but I like the Latin mass. Yeah. I'm going to go like, that's like right. the old school before they change things type of mass. You right. understand what they're saying type of deal. Or I like, uh, the structure. I like, I even, I, I mean, I even find myself Who would have ever thought that'd be punk rock. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. I, I look right. at like for even the Amish, you know, where I look at them like, that's crazy. Now, part of me, not that I want to do it, but part of me is like, maybe they figure a few things out. Like they seem Hell to yeah. be pretty chill right now. Right. Do you think, do you think that that's happening? Because, cause yeah. my, my opinion, my theory is like you said, that's so chaotic that uh it's like we want a little bit of of structure we want a little bit of that that feeling which is maybe why i feel like people are, are moving to the more even more traditional forms of some of this stuff right and that's the good kind of bounce back like as, say with food it's like as the food gets more fake and gmo and you got people talking about how they want to like eliminate meat your inner human is like yo let me get a farm and get my own meat so so they can't take it from me you yeah, know right. what i'm saying like let me churn butter like i grew up on a farm i've i farmed like my, my stepfather's a beast with the farming i'm a you know, I'm an American. I would say mostly Caucasian. I was soft out there. I was with like immigrants yelling. Like I'm like shit, dude. I want to. I want to go freaking on Twitter. You know, I'm not built for these times, but I've done it. And like I've like people are like I want to go live on a farm. It's like it's it's tough work, especially a bigger farm. But you know, people want to put in that work, and uh, yeah, it's 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 appealing to just get off the grid, get away from all this stuff. I definitely think it's the bounce back and I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's definitely, Oh, it's definitely a good yeah. thing. You, I wonder, I wonder if it's more though, just, uh, I mean, don't you feel like every generation of teenagers rebels against whatever was right before that, you know, like I almost right. feel like it's actually rebelling to be the good kid who goes to church now in school. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? That's right. how, that's what's weird about it. It's yeah. just like the whole, you know, rapping and, and devil shit and like going so far that way. Right. Now it's like, oh, this is me rebelling. I'm going to church this weekend. Right. Like, I feel like it's almost like that. Like it's becoming a trend more so just because it's yeah. different than what everybody else is, is trending towards. Yeah. You know, an interesting speculation that Adam likes to make that I, 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 I think I agree with. Because sometimes I look at things, I'm like, is it getting crazier? Like, what is going on? Like, the the propaganda, the media is more, they're more brazen. They, they, they lie differently than they used to. They used to lie and used to have some cunning with it. Now it's like, like I remember during the pandemic. It seems like they're pushing all the buttons. I, I, I brought this up before because I remember watching this on the news and being like, did they really just, it was literally, they literally were talking about how do not go outside. Don't be around anybody because you're going to kill grandma. Okay. Right. Then the next clip was the George Floyd protest where thousands of pe people were packed together and they're like, this is in no way contributing to the spread. Right. It's like one after another. I'm like, they've never lied this brazenly before. And Adam's theory was, and I think I agree with this is that, is it because uh new media is making it so hard to control the narrative that this is like the la this is like the hail mary, yeah, like right. those that control shit. They're like they can't control, it, so they're getting crazier and crazier. Right? Do you think that that's what might be happening? Yeah, and to your point, I remember like I think it was New York Times. They wrote this article like she was like I was just against people going outside, but now I'm supporting it. She was like, "Am I a hypocrite?" Because like I was like, <laughs> <laughs> she was like going through yes, her own are. mind, yeah. and I'm like, "Yes, you're yes. an idiot, Deborah." Or like whatever, <laughs> you know, like Sarah, you suck. No, but yeah, no, I think I think that is happening, and I also think. It's like, if you can just, this is the, 
the pro side of it is they are they are losing the narrative. I'm seeing the comment section, like on Twitter, Elon has done a fantastic job to level the playing field. Even Instagram and Facebook, like I'm seeing the comment section of all political parties that are pushing stupid crap. Their audiences are like getting smarter than them. And I feel like it, everyone has options. So some of these people, they get their power and they get their little social media channel and they forget that they're listening to your podcast and Rogan. And, mm -hmm. and like, there's people that are educating themselves from everywhere. So if you can't keep up intellectually, you're gonna get got by your own audience. But, you know, the the bad part of what the media is doing is I feel like they know in this like day and age, like say like 15 years ago, if they say it's a big story, it's a big story. Now <clears throat> there's going to be 15 big stories that would have lasted a year that are going to go away in 48 hours. So they are doing these Hail Marys of like, say with the border, there's no way Democrats or Republicans would have allowed millions of people to come across the border. Yeah. Like mil I'm not talking like a couple immigrant millions from a hundred different countries, China, Russia, it's really happening. And no one, but like they know that the narrative is so <clears throat> watered down. The right feels the way they do. The left feels the way they do. There's nothing you can really do about it. So they're like, all right, let's throw them all. Let's do it all now because no one can really do anything about it. So I think it is a combo of them getting desperate <clears throat> and them knowing in the social media age that they're, they, if they just keep doing it and, and bouncing to story to story that by the time, like during the Trump era, that was like my whole career. It's like, I'd debunk it. Then they'd move to the next one, move to the yeah. next one, move to the next one. And it's like, on one hand, they're getting found out and people are catching on to it. On another hand, they don't even care because even though most people know that they're lying, they they somehow get away with it. And like, even if 80% of the country knows that like what what's going on at the border is a little strange, it's still open. Well, look at the, <laughs> look at the reports on right. alien stuff, like from yeah. U UFO stuff. Right. That would have like 15 years ago, that would have blown up. Right. Now people are like, nobody Next. cares. Yeah. Nobody yeah. cares. Yeah. I'm like, dude, they literally just admitted there's a, there's UFOs. You know? Does the alien have a TikTok channel? Yeah. Like, no, yeah. I don't yeah. give a shit. Yeah. It's still like, waiting for wait, Bigfoot though. Does the yeah. alien have a TikTok channel? What do you mean? You're like, yeah, like, does he have like a TikTok page? You're like, no. Well, I, I mean, think I think the algorithm also <laughs> perpetuates this this behavior also, right? Because even uh, even if your audience is disagreeing and arguing with you, them arguing and engaging feeds the algorithm, puts you at the top, gets right. more views, potentially gets more money. Right. So it incentivizes I, you. I, yeah, it does incentivize you. So it's like, who gives a fuck if this is outlandish and crazy and extreme? It's like, right. let's put it out there because at the, at the end of the day, it's going to get the most views and likes or dislikes, which still feeds us. So I yeah. think that's... yeah. You know, it's really crazy. So in our, we're in the health space. So it's really easy for us to see propaganda in, in relation to health because we understand health pretty well. So news articles will come out and the average person might be like, oh, wow. But we'll be like, that's total bullshit. Right. I'll give you an example of one that's kind of crazy. There's a peptide called semaglutide ozempic, right? And you see all the articles about it. Oh, it causes 20% of your body weight and weight loss. Actually quite effective when it comes to weight loss. There's definitely potential side effects, but it's the first pharmaceutical, quote unquote, that actually causes weight loss. And then we're seeing these articles that are talking about how bad it is for you. And then I'm reading how executives from the largest processed food manufacturing companies got together and they're like panicking. Right. What do we do about this peptide that makes people <laughs> eat less? And I'm like, it's oh, cutting shit. into our profits. It's big pharma versus big food. Like right. this is a propaganda war and you got to kind of sift through. Right. And then that leads me to this follow to the following, you know, kind of comment, which I would love to hear what your take is. We were talking earlier about AI and I told you how uh, we caught an ad. Somebody sent me an ad of me selling a product that I never sold. And it's crazy. my voice and everything. It's really weird. So crazy. Are we going to get to the point where, where, cause everything's so free but then there's so much fake stuff that's out there. Do you think we're going to get to the point where people are going to beg for more control? We're yeah. going to want arbitrators of truth, government arbitrators. So it's going to like make full right. circle. What do you think about that? I think so. I mean, even during the pandemic, you saw a large portion of people either want that or just be like completely complacent about it. And that made it interesting to do like a not normal job because at first it's like, yo, my job's so crazy. But then even normal jobs got kicked out. Like millions of businesses got closed, like dentist office were closed down. And I was like, oh, I'm still working. Look, look how that turned out. You yeah. know, like mm. my job seemed more stable than it was. But yeah, I mean, the, the AI stuff is interesting because you you, you don't want to let it go unregulated to some extent because I, I don't know. I, this is like a very bizarre problem to have where someone could literally create a fake you, sell products, do whatever. Say you did something on camera, they like they could literally try to like arrest somebody in the future for yeah. something they said on a video that wasn't them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you almost do want some sort of rule, but yeah, the, the but chances of them not- of <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah, the, the positive right, side it's, to it's, that, it's right? It's rough. My, the optimistic view I have of that is that 
people now, I don't think, like even I was guilty of this, right? I would read some article and respond where I, right away, like, oh, like my reaction to that, where I don't do that anymore. Like I right away, like if I read something that like is at all alarmist, like I need, I have to go find the counter. I would search to see if it's real. It's like, right. I didn't do that, but I've already been trained to do that now. Cause I've already made mistakes where I respond to something or share something. And then I find out, oh shit, well, that's not the whole truth. And so right. I think that more people, because there's so much bullshit are becoming like that. Don't yeah. you think, do you feel like the, the more people are, more are, are starting to become more aware that there's so much of that so that you're, you're, you're less likely to tr jump I, on trends right away. Yeah. But my fear is this, cause the Soviets did this right. Where they would constantly change what was okay to say to the point where people didn't know what to say. And so mm. they would say nothing just and just the state ask, to say it. what can right. we say? So it's like, my fear is that it's going to get so like, I don't believe anything. Yeah. Just right. tell me what to exactly. believe. Exactly. You you're not wrong. The media did, did like a crazy like a a big like hit piece on me after the Vivek interview, like a bunch of different media things. And the the weird part was like no one cared. You know what I'm saying? Because like <laughs> they do all these articles and like they're losing that audience that cares. Like yeah. if you go on Rogan, it's a million times bigger than that. Like no one cares what they're saying. So with that being said, moving forward, like what I'm wondering is if things get so fake on the internet, like do, at a certain point, it, are people just going to want to like tap out completely? Like what if it gets to the point where like, you, you don't even know who you're watching, if it's real, if it's not real, like right. it's you, it's not, it's the rogue, it's fake rogue and it's fake Rachel Maddow where everyone just smashes their phone and they're like, yo, I, I got to like completely get off this. Cause there's no point in even being here anymore. Cause like, not, I don't know what's real. Like, is it going to get to that point of, cause it's not even evolved yet. AI, like say in 15 years, like, what is the, I don't know the answer to it. Like, what is the solution between like letting it go unregulated and regulation of a literal like hologram of you that could like commit a crime right. that makes people think that you committed a crime in the street, but it wasn't even you. And now the police are like, <laughs> it's, it's a really like, there's, gotta be, there's gotta be a thing yeah. down the pipe, right? Like look what we did with like blue checks, right. To authenticate who you are. Like there's gotta yeah. be something in the future where, because I do think that, that that's inevitably going have, to happen. Have you seen I mean, our, we're already seeing that kind of happen. Right, have the you seen, ad of you is nuts. Yeah, like someone's selling something with yeah. your Well, when we got likeness. that, you, so when we saw that, yeah. we immediately, if you look at our, um, I don't know what you call it, our emblem or whatever, when you look up our podcast on the it, icon, yeah. an icon, and now says on it, 100% organic human made. And I'm like, we need to put this on here. <laughs> yeah. oh we're like, well, 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 what's that? Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, right. No, yeah. you're you're ahead of the curve for sure. It's already It's already happened to you and it's not even at like near the peak of how right. realistic it's going to yeah. get nor That's are we even that important yeah. imagine being someone <laughs> yeah. really important you know what i'm saying so it's it's so i think it's going to be something like that where there'll be some sort of way to verify people are authentic and i do think that we are just in a weird time of watching the old media die and this is their last yeah. dying this craziness that we have because i do think that the place people are going to get their news in the future is a Joe Rogan, is a, a voice that you've built a, re a relationship. A trusted you know, voice. Yeah. Yeah, tr or someone like you where you're like, I I relate to this guy. I agree with what he said, or I've never even met him. I'm not going to watch CNN. I'm not going to watch Fox. I don't care. Like right. I trust that he's going to go do all that work for me. And so I just think that we're moving into that time. Well, be being a musician, I want to hear your thoughts and take on like a lot of the AI sort of mashups that they're doing lately yeah. and, and how they're actually getting like, like a lot of attention and, and getting good placement in terms of iTunes and all that. Like, where does right. that, where do you see that evolving? And, you know, maybe the, the potential for an AI um, artist to just emerge, who's not even right. real. <laughs> I would say I don't like it personally, but it, it doesn't matter because it's happening. You know, it's mm -hmm. one of those things. But when I see AI songs getting to the top of the charts, something just feels off, you know, it feels like gimmicky and also just uh, like not ethical, but from the business perspective, like say you're Drake, you could block it like they've been doing because people are making some fire fake Drake songs and you could block it and, and take it down. Or you could like sell a $300 package where people can like use your likeness or you create whatever royalties off of it. Wow. So it's like you could actually monetize it. And if you decide like Rick Ross, like or say an artist that like maybe doesn't care as much. I'm not saying Rick Ross doesn't, but like say he's like, oh, and you want to do a Rick Ross song. He's <laughs> like, you can do it. You can hit the iTunes charts, but uh, I'm taking 50% of the song. Uh-huh. 
that I see that becoming sort of a business too, but totally think that that's makes a lot. Of I think seen that's Will, Will I, think I, I made the yeah. prediction that what we're going to see with actors in the future is actors just selling their likeness. They don't have to go act in the movie anymore. They'll right. just be like Tom Cruise will say like, "Yeah, give me you know fifty million, <laughs> right. and then you can go use my character for, for five whatever, years. Or yeah, forever. Right. Yeah, five years. You can use my character for whatever movies, and he don't even have to act, and he just gets mm-hmm. royalties. Yeah, I right. totally think that's. I heard coming. Rogan on a podcast. This one scared me because I think a lot of people agree with him and i don't think this is a good idea i heard him make the argument that hey it, when when we get like artificial general intelligence right so ai that actually is you know i don't know sentient right that maybe we should let that uh lead the world maybe we should have ai politicians because they're objective they're non-biased they're based on right. facts and i'm like you know when you get that's that's not a good place yeah, to be programmed. That's not a good place to be either because you can you know what if the thing to say, what if to save lives to save more people you had to kill all the people with bad genetics right sure. that's that wasn't that's a logical idea you know it's called youth, that's that, that's a logical idea like let's get rid of all the people that have the bad genes and we'll get good genes I'll save millions and millions of future people right. but obviously our humanity yeah. yeah our humanity's like no no that's not a that's not a good idea like we shouldn't do that or to save more people we need to lock them up right so that we don't hurt like this is the kind of stuff that i think like well okay logic will get you so far but after you, you also have to have kind of have this humanity because it's logical to not protect individual liberty and just to go after the collective but we know where that goes yeah, it's a dicey situation where on one hand, you, you know, that sounds like a nightmare sci-fi movie. On another hand, it's like these politicians are so pathetic. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's I like know. Joe Biden's like, you're Clean like, All right, I know he's not really doing that much. And they're so <laughs> dishonest and disingenuous where you're like, part of me is like, would it, could it be that bad to do that for a couple of years? <laughs> it's like with Vivek where it's like, you know, I grilled him an interview and like I gave him a tough interview and I don't know if I trust him yet, but like, give him a shot in the Republican party. He, he'll be better than 90% of the Republican party. If he just does like five good things, you know, mm-hmm. like they're so pathetic and fake that he has a spot there. I was just trying to give an interview. It, it's, I don't know. I, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know that an AI would do worse, but if programs like algorithmically, like, you know, they, they put in like, Oh, don't do this. Don't that's racist, whatever this is like, they like artificially program it. Yeah. There's but like you bias. said, if they don't, then it starts spitting out things people don't want to hear. Yeah. You're like, fuck, yeah. I didn't know I was going to say that. It's like, yeah. well, you know, I was just calculating crime rates and they're like, yeah. dude, slow down, slow down. You're going to get canceled. <laughs> yeah. He's like, just, I don't get care. <laughs> Justin's theory is that AI is the, is going to be the antichrist. Yeah. He's like, that'll yeah. be the so antichrist. That's what's going to rise up, one, perform dude. miracles and, you know, solve all of our problems and get worship. It I could, thought that was a pretty cool theory. It definitely could be. And uh, with the conversation before about like the likeness and stuff, the, the Native Americans used to say like taking pictures of them was like capturing their soul. They yeah. hated like pictures mm-hmm. being taken of them. And I kind of have a little bit of that energy in me. Clearly not with pictures. I missed that time frame. But like with the AI, like, you know, like, did you feel violated when you saw it? Because it's like, not only is it faking you, it's just it, like spiritually, it's just weird where you're yep. like, dude, someone's literally like taking their time to like remake me and make me talk like me. Like it, it's almost like voodoo-esque. It, it creeps me out. Hmm. A hundred percent. Right. right. That way. Yeah. 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 To- yeah. I totally. So tell that. me about the hit pieces on you after. I didn't know that. So I know I, we saw your interview with Vivek. It was short uh, because they only give you, they gave you a short period of time. You gave him, I think the toughest interview he's had. Right. I think, I think he did a good job, but your questions were great. I liked it because um, you, you challenged him. You were cha- yeah. you challenged yeah. him and you were educated on, on some, on the positions that, you know, he had. I didn't know they did hit pieces on you. What would happen? No one did. So it's like, I, you know, I don't even need to talk about it because it, it like went out the window because no one really cares what the media said. But basically I got tangled up and they've, they've already not liked me for a while in, in some cases. But I guess Vivek has been saying in certain interviews or in certain things like talking about ending certain foreign aid because that's what a lot of people want to do. And, you know, they are basically trying to frame his him as anti-Semitic because oh. he wants to cut foreign aid to Israel, similar to like Ron Paul or Thomas Massey, like very libertarian on it. And uh, they they basically try to like frame me as an anti-Semitic YouTube channel. And, and they just like went and got like a quotes. Some of them, they pretty much just like ignored and like rewrit to make it sound crazier. And it was basically a, a way to try to get him to, I think, like, just kind of cave on what he said and, and and feel bad about it and do what, you know, certain people wanted him to do. So 
that's happened to me for a minute. I'm, I'm trying to think the first time, like I interviewed Candace Owens and like they didn't like Candace Owens because she wouldn't condemn yay or something like, you know, and it's like, I mm-hmm. think I just got on certain people's radar and they just started digging, digging and trying to find stuff. But it's not unique to me at the time they were doing it. You know, Elon was having the whole ADL thing where he was considering suing the ADL for defamation because they were going behind the scenes and saying that they wanted to take, you know, certain advertisements away from him, according to Elon. And it's it's one of those ways that, uh, you know, they, they, they just it was almost seemed like pre-planned where they just found every quote that I've ever said out of context and tried to just make it seem as crazy as possible to also make Vivek look crazy. So he caved on that. But oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's one of those things that like, you know, if you want to cut foreign aid to Zelensky, they will say you are a pro-Putin propagandist. If you didn't want to sign the Patriot Act, they say you're a terror sympathizer. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to sign the stimulus bill or, or whatever it's called, the omnibus bill, they'll say you hate poor people. You don't want to give people money. And if you ever question anything about Israel or foreign aid, you know, they're just going to say you're anti-Semitic. So... Um, it's something that I've been dealing with for years because I saw in 2019, Trump and DeSantis passed these anti-Semitism speech bills and, and college protest bills. And while I don't agree with everything on it, obviously it's more like a free speech sort of thing. And I think, uh, you know, Ron Paul was hated for this reason. Also, he got called that by Shapiro and others. It's like, they pass certain things under the guise of things you agree with, like you said, and then they expand it and use it against you. And uh, once I noticed that not just Democrats, but Republicans were doing that, all of a sudden I saw certain media that liked me and certain people that liked me kind of shift, pretty much ignore what I was saying and just run with it. The same way as like the left would say, like, if you don't support the George Floyd protests, you must hate all these people. And you're like, it's not really how it works, you yeah. know, but you could pretend like it is. So yeah, it was that sort of situation. Yes. Um, protecting speech exists specifically to protect unpopular speech. Right. That's the, you know, popular speech doesn't need protection. That's it. So what they'll do is they'll take speech that everybody agrees it sounds terrible. Right. Like saying terrible things about kids or being racist or not. I, I agree. Like that's a terrible thing to say. Right. But if you pass a law banning uh, speech, then that, that law can be used to ban whatever they deem to be hateful or wrong. And we know that they can go in all kinds of different directions with that. So that's that's what I think people need to look at. During the pandemic, uh, NPR, and I think it's taxpayer funded, so it's extra embarrassing that my taxes are paying for smear pieces against me, but they wrote a soft (laughs) one and it said anomaly. And it was funny. Well, not funny at the time, but now it's funny. Uh, Chelsea Clinton tweeted it out and she was like, yo, this conspiracy theory is like Tucker Carlson. I was like, oh shit. It's like a coordinated, like, uh, you know, whatever. So I'm reading the thing and it's like, anomaly on Facebook because I, I was in the top five most like po- like biggest posts out of everything. It was like New York Times, Fox, <laughs> anomaly. And like, who the hell is this guy? And they said, he's a conspiracy theorist because he thinks that they use the pandemic for government control. And I said, I everyone knows they use the pandemic for government control. <laughs> it's obvious. The question is, was it justified or not? Some people would say the government control was justified. Others like us would be like, it wasn't justified. <laughs> but the fact that it exists isn't even controversial. No one's even, so like I was like laughing at it where like the, and even in the recent ones they're like he also questions the pharmaceutical industry and it's like who doesn't if, yeah if, you if, should <laughs> if you if you question the pharmaceutical industry they call you a conspiracy theorist anti-science or anti-vaxxer if you question anything they say on race they call you racist if you have traditional you know relationships between men and women they call you a sexist if you question what they're doing at all with climate change they call you a denier and if you question certain things in in foreign I don't know, like uh, foreign policy. Do you remember in 2016 when it was like Bernie and Hillary, when like Bernie bros liked Bernie, they would be like, oh, you're Putin people. And yeah. like, I, like at the time I was like, wait, who, who's like, I didn't even, you know, like they kept calling me Russian when I wasn't like a Russian bot. Cause that, like Hillary, like to justify, she's like, oh, nobody hates me. It's mm-hmm. all Russian bots. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh yeah, everybody, lo- like all the Trump supporters secretly like you. They're just Russian bots. <laughs> so like I've gone through this narrative. It's just some... You know, sometimes it's like more brutal than others, but I think, uh, you know, I can't imagine, like I'm watching the stuff that Bobby Kennedy and Vivek are going through. Oh, like, man. you know, dude, it's like running for president is like a whole nother a whole level nother of thing. like, I'm, dude, they got 10,000 different angles that are coming at both those guys. Uh, I'm like, sheesh. Yeah. When the, for me, the scariest thing is when you see a, a political party organize uh, effectively to get someone out or silenced in their party. They well, did they Trump. Trump. When you they saw, did, we saw them all rally together on Trump. Well, you saw it with Ron right. Paul. Literally, there were. I remember this mm-hmm. when the, when the when they were. Uh, you had um, the votes were going on. 
the delegates were trying to vote um, and Ron Paul delegates were put in a bus and the bus never got to where it was supposed to go. Oh Do you remember that? Yeah. It no, was I don't, I don't. Oh, yeah. they were tweeting from the bus or like, they won't drop us off. Yeah. They were just circling around. I'm like, this is, <laughs> yeah, this right, is right. wild. And I was totally not a Bernie supporter whatsoever, but it right. was interesting to see the left organized to silence him and kick him out. Right. And I was like, holy shit, this is, that's not fair. Like, I don't like the guy, but let him go and, and see what people vote for. And they have like super delegates where at least on the Republican side, it's just like who you vote for on the Democrat side. Yeah. It's like who you vote for, except for like 400 or however many delegates that just like, it's like basically you got to win by like, to 15% because yeah. there's like a, an unelected group that just votes. And, I, you know, you always hear Republicans are worse than Democrats, like growing up as like a kid. And you're like, no, for sure. This party is way more corrupt than the Republican Party because they're both corrupt. But like you can vote for Trump over Jeb Bush and you could win. But like Bernie's going up again. It's like, it's like starting a basketball game 20 to zero. It's like yeah. this is yeah. it's fucked like up. Like delegates yeah, worth this much, super delegates worth yeah, this yeah. much. Yeah, who are these? Who are, like, can I see them? Like, are, are they, I bet they're very unimpressive people. You know what I'm saying? They're just <laughs> disgusting pizza bags, like slobbering, you know? You're like, yeah. I'm a super delegate. It's really important what I do. You're like, yeah. what the fuck are you, how did, dude? How did that end up? What, what, did you, uh, what did you think of the debate so far? What did you think of the debate so far? Who do you think, and who do you think, uh, what do you like and what do you not like that you're seeing with the candidates? Um, I mean, it's interesting because Trump's not there. So, you know, like it talk about that play, actually. What he's, do you think he's, about doing, he's playing smart, in my opinion. I think he, he he's so far ahead in the in the primary, according to the polls, that it's smart for him to not get on stage and get compared head to head. He's playing, in my right. opinion, he's playing, he's playing smart politics, I think. I would say strategically he's right. Ethically, I'm a little annoyed because yeah. I would say as somebody that liked his debates in 2016, he won the election because of the debates. Like mm. he went from like nothing to everything because right. he just mopped the floor with those idiots. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, as somebody that came up through debates and that was the only way he came up, he's talking about like canceling the third one. It's like, all right, bro, you don't have to show up, but to try to cancel a debate when you came up through debates is annoying. But strategically, I do think it's smart because if you're up that much, you know, he is like the main attraction. So it's like, you know, if oh, he, yeah. like, he doesn't show up, it's like Chris Christie yelling at Ron DeSantis. It's, um, I thought Vivek probably did did well the first one. I thought DeSantis did well the second one. Some of these other guys, it just doesn't matter what they say. Like it doesn't. No matter how good Chris Christie does, he's not going to win. No, you know, and no matter like Mike Pence, he has no chance. Yeah. So it's like I, I felt like what's the guy Doug Burnham? I guess he did Who's okay, that? but yeah. like exactly, like, who cares? <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's really I think between. DeSantis and Trump. Trump's up a lot of points. I think Vivek is like the youngest, uh, most impressive person that could find himself in a cabinet or something. But uh, yeah, I, I would say, I would say the debates are kind of a snooze fest. There's not that much like interesting going on. But I, I do like how DeSantis is pointing out things that I, I want. Like I wish him, him and Trump would debate because he did give an award to Fauci on the last day of office. Like he is saying outlandish things about the vaccine. So. It's a weird space, man, because Trump doesn't like to be like questioned. Like even with the Megyn Kelly interview, he got pissed because she asked a few good questions. You know, it's like it, it's getting uh, it's, it's getting weird. But, uh, you know, I, I think that Trump doesn't he doesn't need to do anything different because no one cares. You know, like it's like he's still leading 30 percent. So why would he shift? I think what's no more interesting is not so much the Republican primary. I think what's going to be interesting is what the left is going to do, because Biden is in serious mental decline. Are they going to let him run? Are they going to yeah. figure out a way to get him out so they could put someone else Newsom, in? Newsom, maybe. If, Do you think if Newsom? Gonna, if they were going to, I think so. But I I think actually, and this is probably unpopular too, but I think all the Trump indictments, like the first one, it shot Trump up in the polls. And I think the Democrats think that Trump's the easiest person to beat because he's so like love him or They're trying him. to pick their enemy, right? I think so. And here's my, I was thinking about the other day, here's how the Republicans can win. And I don't know if this will actually happen because there's a lot of like animosity, but say Trump gets the nominee. If he put DeSantis as attorney general and put him in a high level spot and he put RFK as like HHS or FDA, oh, you know God. what I'm saying? And, and and like said, hey, guys, you're not going to win. You know what I'm saying? Like RFK, love the guy. But if he runs independent, like he's probably not, mm. not going to win. DeSantis, if he loses, he lost. It's over. 
if Trump like plucked them both and said he would give them both cabinet positions and took their audience to say, hey, guys, like we like because the DeSantis and Trump camps are fighting like hysterically yeah, with each yeah. other. I'm not going to vote for either one of your candidates. Like, chill the fuck out, guys. And the Bobby Kennedy people, rightfully, they like him more than these guys, because say what you want about Bobby Kennedy. He spent decades at going after Monsanto, the pharmaceutical industry. So those people are not going to vote for Trump if he's running around shilling the vaccine too hard. So it's like there there are millions upon tens of millions of people like Bobby. You know, I think if Bobby runs in independent if trump and desantis just keep fighting like that's how that's the only way biden's gonna win so if trump think, could swoop them up you think, it would be brilliant you actually. think kennedy right? you i think feel like kennedy, trump would win by 10 points yeah, if he that, did would, that. that would be brilliant do you think kennedy will pull more from the republicans or from the democrat as an independent he said on a podcast he thinks he pulls more trump voters they put up his like donations and i think he got more from democrats but barely I think it's going to be close because I do mm -hmm. think that he has like got the a lot of progressive like people that are yeah. like in the shadows, but also a I know I know at least in my own personal circle four two time Trump voters that want to vote for Kennedy and they're just disgusted with his rhetoric and like you know that's the thing with Trump is like everyone makes mistakes but like the more I like he'll he'll go on a thing is say, you know, the like, it doesn't even matter what DeSantis did in Florida, like the Democrats did fine. And like, it's just sunny. So like, it's easy to run. And it's like, bro, California's <laughs> run horribly. And it's, yeah. it's really nice here. So like, he's doing so much stuff that's pushing the Kennedy people away. I it might hurt. It might hurt Trump more. Uh, you know, I don't it's I yeah. feel like it's going to be really close. I though. think I think um, Biden would get I think he would get cream by Trump this time. Uh, but I think if the left put Newsom, we would see, which, God, please don't let Newsom run. He's terrible. For people who oh, live in Lord California, I, I don't man. understand uh, why anybody would like the guy. I think I heard, I've, I've read like theories and rumors that Michelle Obama could be yeah. put in. That would be the kryptonite. I don't think Trump would do well uh, on a stage debating against Michelle. I think he bullies everybody. Right. But I think with Michelle, it would look he bad. Can't. I don't think he would look, I don't think, I think he would get, he would lose. She's definitely popular. And uh, I I don't think she's going to run. What do you think about this as like a, a like you're kind of libertarian, right? Yeah. You are? Yeah. yeah. Like in certain other countries, they have more political parties. So they, they like have a block, right? Yeah. And they use that block for leverage. What I've always thought of like libertarians, and a lot of times they don't want it because like, no, we want to run for president. But like, say you have like five, like Kennedy has like 10% of the vote, 20% of the vote. DeSantis has millions of like dis people that are like, I don't want to vote for Trump or whatever. Like, I feel like these politicians should use that leverage and, and, and like maybe try to make Trump sign a paper or something where it's like, okay, yeah. you put me in this cabinet position or, or you do this libertarian thing that you'd never do. Because realistically, it's like, you know, if all the DeSantis people throw a fit and won't vote for Trump, which I, I don't think necessarily, and all these people that are like, don't like Trump anymore because of certain things he did that like Bobby Kennedy, like that is like Ross Perot-esque enough to like win an election for Biden. But like they don't I don't see that enough where like the Libertarian Party pretty much I, I like Dave Smith. I don't think he's running, but yeah. like, you know, I don't think they have a chance. But if they have five percent of the vote, what what's the shame of being like, OK, Republicans are more libertarian, cl close to it. Let's make them make a deal. I'll give you our five percent of our votes. I'll give you the Kennedy vote, but you got to put me at FDA. You got you got to actually do something libertarian and stop governing like socialists and Democrats. Like I feel like that would be so effective cuz I'm worried that Trump's going to lose to Biden because if he run, if he like said like after the DeSantis thing, if he's just like screw you, screw you, like you talking shit to everybody, yeah. it's like you might want to strike strike a few deals because I I know at least multiple people that are like yeah I'm not voting for Trump I'm voting for Kennedy yeah even if he runs independent yeah well organizing uh here's the problem with libertarians uh it's like trying to herd cats like <laughs> I've never seen I'm serious I mean you know I mean you look at libertarians you have anarcho capitalists you have you know classical liberals you have libertarians are almost like you know Republicans trying to get them like unified forget about it and the party right. itself is is a, is it could be a, oh it could be a clown show yeah. like, you know, people that go up represent the party and they're like yes brothers and sisters should be able to marry each other and you're like oh bro like, why are you making that point you know, <laughs> you know like legalize heroin like okay yeah. like, get the moral <laughs> like, get the moral <laughs> argument but yeah. you're not going to win yeah. Yeah. And he, so they don't do very well so getting them to back anybody is like even even a libertarian you know, candidate. Do you think like Do you think Kennedy would be better off trying to strike a deal with Trump, or do you think that he's justified in just being like, "Screw it, I don't like either party. You guys haven't done shit for me. I'm here to just throw a wrench in." Because yeah. the, the thing is, running independent, like if he really does, like he's 
as much as I like the guy, he's not going to win. Mm. So, like, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah, maybe you just, just don't care. Yeah, yeah I think. Mm. I don't uh, know. Maybe it worked. Maybe you're trying to get the message out there. Maybe they have both screwed you over. Like, yeah. Democrats hate him. I, you heard the story out. that Trump almost partnered with Kennedy. He told that story a few times where, like, Trump was going to hire Kennedy to run a vaccine safety council. Mm. And then Kennedy says Trump took a million from Pfizer uh, in a donation and then hired a bunch of pharmacy lobbyists oh. to run HHS and FDA, which literally happened. And Kennedy, like, you know, Trump knows about certain stuff and, and knew Kennedy and called him. And Kennedy said that he met with Trump and then Fauci walked in and he was like, yo, Trump chose that path instead of my yeah. path. So maybe he's like, screw it. None of these people like me, I'm just going to screw the system up. But you know, if he helps Biden win, that would suck. Oh, yeah. I think, <laughs> you know, like, you know, yeah. like, that I think, would suck. I think Trump, square one. I think Trump will win the primary. I think that's easy for him to do. I think the general is he would need somebody on his team that can communicate his message better than him. I think Vivek does that very well. I think Vivek can communicate the message right. in a way that comes across to most people. He's, he could come, you know, Trump is like, Trump is one of those people you, you like him or you totally hate him. Right. I think Vivek can deliver the me deliver the message uh, much better than him. So right. as, if if I were running the, sh you know, the you know the the strategy, I would tell Trump like, look, after you win the primary, get Vivek on your team, right. have him communicate your message. He does a better job than you, and you just like chill, like chill. Because right. Trump, here's where Trump really screws up. This is from political. Like, not saying I support one person or the other, but when shit gets heavy and hot, this is where Trump says the wrong shit. Like when the when the George Floyd protests happen. And all that shit. I knew Trump. Oh, oh Trump's going to say some stupid shit. What does he do? Instead of getting up there and be like, we all need to work together or whatever. He's like, you loot, we shoot. I'll say, like, oh, fuck, bro. Like, and then he was just tweeting law and order in all caps, but like yeah. not doing anything. Yeah. Where it's like, bro, the tweets ain't going to fucking bring the order back. Right? Yeah. Law and order. You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah that would be ideal yeah. right now. Yeah. I actually think there's, there's no chance that he wins. I think that the people that I know that are friends of mine that voted for Biden and even admit how horrible it's been still hate Trump more. That's the feeling I get right. still is that right. the, the people that have always not liked Trump are still no matter what, no matter They'll still, vote for anything. Yeah. And I even that. think some of the people like ourselves who probably liked some of the policies and stuff Trump did what he did with the vaccines. That was enough for us to be like, ah, I'm not a fan. And so right. I really don't think there's a chance that he can win. So I actually think, and Sal called this early on that he thinks that the Democrats are helping Trump, uh, be the main candidate because oh, they so. believe he's the only one they can beat. You, you know, there was a poll that, you know, the Hodge twins. You yes. Them? So they did a poll like uh, three months before the Alvin Bragg Trump arrest. And they said, who do you like better for president? And DeSantis won by 65, 35. Yeah. And then right after the Alvin Bragg arrest, they did the same poll and it was 67% Trump. Yeah. Like that alone flipped the support for DeSantis and Trump. It was the Alvin Bragg arrest and the revenge narrative. It helped them. It helped them fundraise. Even the mugshot is good for merch. It's like either you have to assume that the Democrats are stupid and they just helped Trump. But we know from the 2016 emails that you're not allowed to read. You got to go through Chris Cuomo and CNN. That's mm -hmm. what they said. But like they did the Pied Piper strategy the first time. So we already know that that's, that's in their wheelhouse of elevating candidates that they think are easy to beat. So, you know, I they, think they, they did that they, during the midterms. Right. And it's a smart strategy. It, it can backfire, but it's a, look, look, it's, here's the analogy I'll use. Boxing promoters and managers are known to do this. They'll have a fighter. They want to protect him and they'll pick his opponents and they'll right. say, I know everybody wants you right. to fight that guy, but his style is not good for you. Right. He's going to hurt you. Right. We're going to pick these other guys that you're going to fight because we think you have a better chance. It's a right. very smart. And then smart they set up a case, right? They make him do something or say something that's pissed off. So then now everybody wants to watch that fight. Well, so. yeah, look, right, it's, right. It's, it's a very smart strategy and um, it, it makes a lot of sense, especially when the Democrats are being blamed for the economy, COVID. Now everybody changed their opinion. Everybody's like, Oh my God, that was a terrible policy. Right. They're getting blamed for that inflation, gas prices. They're like we need to pick somebody we know we can beat. Cause I, they canceled him. Right. He was, he had no way of communicating. Trump was out all of a right. sudden he was resurrected. And right. so I, I'm like, did they do that? So they could be, no, I, I think, I think they did too. And I know that the policies are actually getting more popular. Like when Matt Walsh did that, what is a woman documentary? Yeah. I had Democrats text me like privately, like friends that I'm mine. And they're like, bro, did you see that? And I'm like, I saw parts of it. And they're like, it's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, like even though that he's perceived it extreme, it's like that man, woman, like kid, like they, the fact that they couldn't even say what a woman was like blew Democrats mind. They're like, what? You don't yeah. even know what it is. And then like the school stuff and the crime, there's so many, and the border, there's so many things going in favor of the Republican party. But this is what I try to tell people that really like Trump, that want him to win. 
when he talks and I, I voted for him, I made a song about him. Like I, I've always liked the guy. He, he puts this message out there where it's like kind of like about him and his story. And like, that makes sense to you guys that love him, but the average person, like yeah. they want to hear about what's going on in their world. And he makes a lot of it about like him, which is good for the primary and bad for the general. Yeah. And that's what they know where like, if he could get out of his own way and be like, yo, the crime, like all the things he actually cares about. But it, it seems like, and when I say this sort of stuff, people get mad at me because I'm always thinking like game theory and stuff, like how to win the election. They're like, shut up, we agree. It's like, that's the problem though. Like I talk to some of my neighbors, I'm not this way, but I know women that are like, I'll never vote for Trump. They're just, they hate him. And, but they'd vote for DeSantis or Kennedy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they won't vote. And like, that's real. I have four friends that voted for Trump twice. They're like, dude, I he the more he talks about this stuff, like if he just dropped it, it's fine. But he says it saved the world. And I, I think he's a shill. I think he's in on it. So what I was saying to you is like, I really feel like that's his best path to victory. And I know he probably won't do it, but like as much as he hates DeSantis or whatever, Attorney General DeSantis is really good at actually doing stuff and not just talking about it. Like he's, mm -hmm. Trump is like a salesman and he's like a really good talker. But when he tried to like do stuff, he like had bad advisors. He's really not good at getting stuff done. Like he did foreign policy well, talking to people. But like DeSantis is real like lawyer-esque. Like he knows how to like get it actually like passed and legislated. Put him as attorney general, put Bobby Kennedy at the head of FDA. Trump wins the election by 20 points. Yeah. You know, I, like, I think that's I a good strategy. Would, I wish he would do that. Cause like, dude, if not, I swear that the Democrats know how to make it not about Biden, where they're like, oh, no one likes Biden. Yeah, but they like climate change and they like abortion. Yeah. And, you know, like they'll figure they out take the spotlight off. a way to do it. And like it, it's like there's like going to be that pause, like you said, like, what's Trump going to say? And he'll be like, piece of shit, bird brain. She needs treason, treasonous, treason. And like, you know, like, dude, there's two days till the election. Just wait till after, you know, like he'll put out this huge true social value. He's like, you, your wife's fat and you know it. And yeah. I know it. And everyone Everybody knows how knows fat it. your wife is. And we're like, yes, she is fat. Like, bro, shut on, your bro. mouth. Yeah, like, yeah. it's not now, dude. Yeah, you know, my issue with DeSantis is, uh, is he's got an authoritarian streak, which I don't like. Like, I, I remember when he was going after Disney and he was trying to use the laws against Disney and he's trying to pass laws to support some of the stuff I agree with, but I don't like his use of the law to do it. And I tell, I, even these guys, I'm like, ah, he's got an authoritarian streak I'm not, I'm not too happy with because I feel like if he had the power to pass certain laws that those laws would be used again, potentially could be used against right. other people in the future. So that's always my worry. It was just the Disney thing though, right? That's the only thing yeah. that you didn't like. Yeah, that, there's that. Now they're he using did, the Royal Clause. We, we were split on that too. He but does with, that though. With the Disney, because I, I kind of like briefly looked at it. They had a special set of laws for, they did. Yeah. for themselves, right? So it's like, yeah, I don't know. There's a the, shelter there, yeah. Right, sure. Yeah, so what, he took it away? Yeah, well, he's he's threatening. Like he's using authoritarian like kind of tendencies rather than, and, and, and honestly, if Disney has an opinion, they have an opinion, and he's more like, oh, you have that opinion. Well, now we're going to do this to your taxes. That's the part that I go. Oh, yeah, they already had a special them, situation. Right? They weren't paying. I forget. It was sure, but he didn't say anything until he didn't like their, yeah. their opinion. Yeah, yeah. got it. And yeah. that's the part that makes me go. Uh, you know, right. But that's they, my own personal. They're putting up billboards yeah. and things to kind of like, uh, uh, I guess, like kill some of the momentum he was getting there. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Th then he he struck back yeah. with yeah. those laws. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to ask you this because you you know some of the stuff you say is popular. Some of the stuff you say is not popular. Right. Um, or at the time when you say it's not popular, <laughs> do you ever get like? Do you ever feel like paranoid? Do you be like? Oh, shit, these like what, they're attacking me, they're trying to take my channel down. Mm. What the hell is There's going black on? Helicopters like, flying yeah. over because I, I, I have look, I have certain <laughs> strong opinions, and, and if someone asks me, I'll tell them. But thankfully, I work in a space that, while those starting to get politicized, uh, isn't generally politicized. I couldn't imagine being in that space in the, in, in the feeling of like, oh, fuck, I hate this, I don't like this, right? But the attacks, and I know how nasty it can get. And if you get loud enough, they could get real nasty. Like, you ever they like, do lose sleep. <laughs> Uh, it's, I'm pretty, I'm pretty peaceful guy, but yeah, definitely at times like, uh, you know, for the most part it's pretty chill, but yeah, no, there's been like when they write hit pieces and publish your full name and say all this stuff and the way certain people say certain things, like you realize their intentions and they like hate you and they want to do stuff, you know, when, uh, I would say when the Capitol thing happened, I wasn't at the Capitol. I wasn't there. I wasn't in DC. I, I didn't even really like Trump at the time because he saw in the vaccine too much. And the FBI called my father and said what? that they were going to show up and I needed to call. And I thought it was like a hoax or something. So I looked at the number it was real and they were just like seeing if I had information, which I didn't because I wasn't there. But they used that event to basically, I feel like, try to like scare journalists and stuff, you know, like and, and be like, well, 
I'm trying to think why, why would they ask me? Maybe because I was at a lockdown protest and somebody was there, you know, I'm trying to figure out in my head, like, why would they, why would they call me? I wasn't even in DC, but they, like they use that event. And here's the thing about like the Patriot Act too. When you broaden the terms of what it means to be a terrorist, or you can do like six degrees of separation sort of thing, they now have the legal precedence to just like act like everyone's doing something. So nothing happened. It wasn't a big deal. It was a short conversation because I had no information. You but get just enough talking? to try to intimidate you. Because that sure. would do, I mean, I think a lot of people would be like, oh, fuck, sure. FBI, I'm done. I'm not going to do this anymore. That's creepy. Yeah. Or like Chelsea Clinton sharing you and calling you the internet's Tucker Carlson. That's creepy. Uh, you know, mm. Times of Israel, Jerusalem Post, and 15 different news organizations calling you an anti-Semite. That sucks. You know, wow. like when you're not. So yeah, there's times where it sucks. Uh, you know, high level people trying to tie you to like actual events that happen that you have nothing to do with. You know what I'm saying? Like going past just speech and trying to act like, you know, that's a new game that they're playing too, where it's like your words can cause this event, you know, like to try to shut people up. It's creepy, but I would say the one thing that gives me solace in a weird way was like, I was a very chill guy. And then the lockdown happened and everyone that played it safe, all of a sudden they, they nothing was safe. You know what I'm saying? Like you played it safe your whole life. You had the safe job and now I'm making money on the internet and you can't make money. And the government's telling you, you can't go to the beach. And it's like being a normie, for lack of a better term, and I'm not acting like I'm so special. I'm not. I'm just saying like that ended up not being the safe route. And the and the more you were emboldened in the system, the harder it was to not get the vaccine or else they were taking everything from you. So it's like, you know, the, the So it's an illusion of like safe and not safe. It's like you're not safe no matter what. Yeah. And and for sure. And and like people sometimes they try to scare me and stuff. And it's like I don't really like to drive long distance. Like I will, but like highways I'm not a fan of. i I drive. I'm not a I'm a good driver, but it's like you're more likely to get in a car accident than like something happened with this. So I try to put it all in perspective, but at a certain point, it's just like, I, it, it's been tough at certain times, but it's like, this is the life I chose. You know, this is why some of like my favorite athletes and the greatest athletes of all time will message me and I hang out with them and I get put on guest lists of my favorite bands. And stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, it's cool. been, it's been a very rewarding experience as well. I've been connected with a lot of cool people that appreciate what I do. And it's like, that's just where it at. But I, I would say I don't worry about it because um, you know, it like, imagine if you had to go to a company for not that much pay and they were telling you, if you don't put your gender on this piece of paper, then we're going to fire you and yeah. we're going to say you hate gay people. <laughs> it's like, would you, you know, like that's the situation a lot of people are in. They're like, dude, if I don't put a pronoun on my thing, they're going to call me, you know? So like the, the persecution is like hitting everyone. Um, I, at the end of the day, all I have is my, my word, my, you know, and even seeing now with like what's going on, I see people that I really like say something that I don't agree with and all the comments are like ratioing them and telling them, oh, you're wrong. You're like, you know, I don't really have to like, it, at the end of the day, it is what it is, you know? Like mm. the, there's only one way to build certain types of respect. You can't be afraid or, uh, you know, like change what you believe to appease mm. somebody. How How is it all um, affected your business? One of the things I didn't get to ask you yet is, you know, on your come up, at some point, obviously, and I know it doesn't, some people think just once you do one viral video, all of a sudden you're rich. It doesn't, I know it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I know that even though you had, you talked about a couple viral videos early on, I'm sure you weren't really making money for a while. At what point did you actually start to make a legitimate living for yourself? And then also take me through when all these hit pieces and bullshit happens, does it positively affect the business? Is it negatively? What's that all been like? Yeah. So I first started actually making money. I mean, I quit my job maybe like two years before the pandemic. So I was able to just scrape by barely and do it full time, but I was making nothing. It was actually the pandemic. And even though they took money at times, like for, for months there before they started censoring and stuff, I was just getting millions of views on Facebook and, and, and getting paid pretty well. And then when they cut off my monetization, I made a Patreon and a donor box like a, and then I made like a, I started selling merchandise when they cut my revenue on Facebook. So I actually made a lot from that point moving forward. And I started doing really, really well. Um, because especially at the time outside of politics, like a lot of people didn't get it. So like there, there was a really like everyone stuck at home. No one could do anything. And they're like, what the hell's going on? So that was actually like, uh, probably following that. Um, but yeah, it's been tough because I don't get like as many sponsors as everyone else. You know, it's like a different <laughs> lane I'm in for as far as if I was a gamer, I'd be making yeah. millions just off sponsors, but I still have certain sponsors, but I, they're a lot less likely to work with me than like normie accounts. And uh, like when hit pieces and stuff come out, how does it affect business? Uh, you know, I would say like 
it doesn't yeah like maybe pot maybe positive in some ways because like if any press is good press but for me like in the republican party and the conservative movement i realized in 2019 that just like with the music industry how they said hey dress up, like they're, they're playing these little like rituals with people like will you do this will you do this and it's like if you pass four of them and then they they let you in mm -hmm. and and the, the politics is just like that obviously the democratic party but even the republican party when i started taking a more libertarian thomas massey style stance on certain topics that they wanted to start a war with or they wanted to pass a law against I started getting blacklisted. I, I feel like I'm even soft blacklisted from the Republican Party, even though I vote Republican, um, because there are certain things I won't do. So I, I just don't consider myself a victim because that's I, I'd rather be in this position than a sellout or some loser, or some like talking head. So it's just interesting where like there's a lot of doors that close and it's just made me have to work that much harder with entrepreneurship because like, you know, there's people that are way less impressive, way less popular, way can w sell way less tickets that'll be making 30,000 a speech. You know what I'm saying? Because they play ball or because they won't rock the boat. Um, but that's, you know, there's also people Gotta making a hundred million dollars yeah. selling like plastic, like brooms. It's just like, I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's like, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying I, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big like victim. I don't, I don't feel like, Oh, I got shout out. It's like, all right, well, I got to make a new yeah. business then. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of companies do sponsor you? Who is willing, who is willing to get in bed with a guy who wants you inside? <laughs> uh, I would say American heart for gold. Uh, they've been cool. It's just like gold and silver okay. so far. Who knows? So <laughs> they'll probably hate me in a few yeah. months, but yeah, that's, and I'm not even getting paid for that, Smith but I do. Lesson? Yeah, no, <laughs> maybe I'll probably get banned just for selling that ad, right? Don't they ban like gun ads and all stupid shit? But uh, yeah, them I would say like this mushroom company that I haven't even promoted yet because I haven't figured out a good one. But I made my own merch on like it's a dreamrare.com, D R E A M R A R E, Dream Rare. That's also my Instagram. I sell made in America hats, uh, sweatshirts, and I like it was funny. Like I lost a lot of money when Facebook took it away. And then the, the, I was like, all right, I got to start merch. And then I did that and I made like the same amount that month that I lost from Facebook. Oh, so wow. I just oh, like, wow. I did it really quick. And uh, now I'm looking at new avenues, but you know, I've, uh, things have slowed down in some ways from like at certain times for, for multiple reasons, but I'm not very, uh, I don't know. I consider it like a message from God in a weird way where it's like, you know, if I get to, like, I already have enough where I could like, I could fly, do whatever I want. You know, I don't need 15 cars and stuff. So like when, when I screw up and I lose money in something, I, I almost feel like God's humbling me. I don't, I don't look at it like, oh, poor me. I'm not making as much as I did. It's like, I bought the car I wanted. I live by the beach. You know, I could travel. I could see my family whenever I want. What else really do I need? When I fuck up, it's more, I feel like it's God. Like, yo, get back to work, do some push ups. You know what I'm saying? Get back on the computer. And I'm like, okay, okay. My bad, my bad. I just, I got a little excited for a while. I got, I got money. Along that note, I, I re, you know, I don't, you didn't talk a lot about your faith at first. And then you started talking a lot about your faith. Was there yeah. a, was there like a transformation? Did you, or was it always that way? And you just said, you know, I'm going to talk about this now. It was, and I grew up Catholic. Then I rebelled. I was atheist. I read like Richard Dawkins, and I was like this wow. spaghetti monster. I was like Same that an annoying kid, yeah. you know. And like, I, like this kid's like, I have a soul, and I would be like, God, your dog doesn't have a soul. I was like a dickhead, you know. Yeah. And it's funny. I'm friends with that same Christian kid that we got in an argument. Now we're cool, and he's like conservative. It's kind of funny. <laughs> but then it was like I became spiritual, right? Because I was like, oh, and I still like this book, uh, Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. It's mm. like a classic Taoist book, and that that first changed my life before like being a Christian where like coming back to Christianity, it was more like, it, it, it was like, yo, stop playing the victim and like all these kind of things, like live in the present moment. And I really did what it said, not from a religion standpoint, but from like a mindset, spiritual standpoint of like, understanding that like the yin and yang and like my whole life changed at that point because I just stopped. I used to be like, oh, I'm broke. And they, that guy had rich dad and blah, blah, you know, he got the record deal. And like, I was just like kind of a, a, a soft, I almost said a bitch, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, was, I was playing the victim too much. And it's like, well, I got to work that much harder. And when I did, everything happened. And then just like the spiritual chaos of everything, it led me back to Christ. And I think that now, uh, you know, my faith is stronger than ever. And anytime someone tries to like, take me out of it. It's like, I already know I, I was atheist for a year. So it's, it's not like a new thing I've never heard. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm back and I've gone through that gauntlet. So it's not like, sometimes people think they're blowing my mind by trying to like, take me away from it. It's like, dude, I've, I've been there, you yeah. know? So mm -hmm. it's, I'm in a good place. I think we'll see. <laughs> yeah. well, good deal, man. Well, I, I, you know, we, I appreciate people who are authentic, who speak opinion, who don't necessarily agree with everything just because they're told to whether i disagree with them whether i agree with them or not 
um, it's not common. It's it's rare uh, nowadays. So that's why I invited you on the show. So I appreciate that. Keep yeah. doing what you're doing. Thank and, you. And uh, hopefully you don't say anything too, too, <laughs> too damaging for yourself. And if you do, <laughs> you know. You, Sorry, got strong you, got faith. you can yeah, always yeah. come back on the show. You got a lot of purpose. So. It's Leave never the case. wrong things I say that get me in trouble. It's always the right things I say. You know, Ooh, so yeah, say, that's a like, quote right there. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you guys. I appreciate it. Like anybody listening, I think like self awareness, self accountability is important. So, you know, just like working on yourself, it's like that's more of a political solution than like freaking out and yelling at people on we Instagram. Make that, we make that yep. point all the time. It's sure. like clean your you, own room. If you are healthy, mm-hmm. if you Be take care of yourself. If you're growth minded, if you're fit, you're just less likely to be manipulated. You're more going to be more innovative, more productive, more positive. It's just going to affect all your decisions in, in a better way. So that's the argument we always clean make. Your, we 100% clean your clean your room, Bucko. Yeah. Clean your room. Is yeah. Peterson? How'd you get in? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, is, it, is there dirt on the floor? Clean, <laughs> clean that, Bucko. All right, dude. Jeez, good, good stuff, man. Thanks for coming on, bro. Yeah, thank hey, you. Appreciate yeah. it.